Steve Degler in Altoona. If you thought you were tuning into the 2006 UPMC Health Plan Eastern League All-Star Game, don't worry, you're in the right place. Blair County Ballpark is right next door. The Altoona Curve getting ready to host the annual event. But Steamer and my friends, we're taking a little break here at Lakemont Amusement Park. We're checking out the Sky Rider at the top of the roller coaster. The first pitch is next. If we get off this thing alive, come on back to Altoona. Welcome to a little place we like to call baseball heaven. Nestled in the Allegheny Mountains of central Pennsylvania, it's officially known as Blair County Ballpark. It's the home of the AA affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Altoona Curve, and the site of this year's 2006 UPMC Health Plan Eastern League All-Star Game. Hi everybody, I'm Paul Steigerwald. Welcome to Altoona, Pennsylvania. A little bit of rain came through here a few minutes ago, but we're anticipating a, an on-time start to this game here tonight, which features the Southern Division All-Stars against the Northern Division All-Stars of the Eastern League. And with me right now is Jason Dombach, the longtime radio voice of the Altoona Curve. And J.D., no question about it, the Southern Division All-Stars definitely have an Altoona Curve flavor to them. Oh, that's right, Steige. Three players from the Altoona Curve will be in the starting lineup tonight. We have Simon Pond at first base, Brett Roneberg, and center fielder Vic Butler, who's off to a tremendous start in center field for the Altoona Curve, has already set a franchise record for triples in a season. And then later on in the ball game, a chance to see Brandon Knight, who's been outstanding in the closer role, Landon Jacobson, who will pitch out of the bullpen as well. And for the third year in a row, we get a chance to see an Altoona Curve pitcher start the Eastern League All-Star game in 2004. It was Ian Snell, and he really put on a show down in Bowie, Maryland, touching 99 miles an hour on the gun. And then last year, Tom Gorzolani up in Portland, and of course, Gorzolani now on the starting rotation for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And we'll see if Shane Eumann can follow in their footsteps. Eumann leads the Eastern League in ERA at 157. He began the season out of the bullpen, got a chance to start in mid-May, and has parlayed that into a chance to start in the Eastern League All-Star game. And he'll be facing a good hitting lineup of the Northern Division All-Stars, who are led by a guy who works for the Portland Sea Dogs, the first-place team in the Northern Division. Standing by with him right now is Steve Degler, the 15-year voice of the Reading Phillies. Degs? <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. With Todd Klaus, the manager of the Northern Division All-Stars, he is the skipper for the Portland Sea Dogs. Congratulations on the honor. Thanks a lot. It is a great honor, and I think it's a credit to uh, seven players on last year's clubs, being in a bit, last year's club, being in the big leagues right now, and and that's the reason I'm here is those players going out and busting their tail every day, and I sure appreciate it. How important is it for you and for the Red Sox organization to have the honor of being the manager of the Northern Division team? Well, I think it's again, it's a credit to the players and, and, it, and it goes all the way back to the scouts who signed those guys and acquired them and, and uh, they've sure done a great job. And this year being in first place at this point after so much turnover and guys moving along, it really is a credit to the whole organization. How important is it for you to win this game? Well, I, I, it's not as important as it would be at the major league level where you gain home field advantage. I think that the most important thing for me is for, for the guys to stay healthy at the end of the game, to go out and showcase their abilities and, and really enjoy the day. Your guy, Chris Smith, is your starting pitcher tonight. What's made him so successful this season? Well, I think he's regained some arm strength after labrum surgery, and that was a big difference from last year where he didn't quite have uh, the arm strength that he had before his surgery, and he's really able to command his fastball in the zone. And when Smitty's commanding his fastball, he can go to his changeup and his breaking ball and he's tough to beat. All right, Todd, thanks a lot. Good luck out there. My pleasure. Thank Todd you. Klaus, manager of the Northern Division All-Stars. During the game tonight, we'll talk with Tim Leeper of the Altoona Curve. He is the manager of the Southern Division All-Stars. Stay tuned. Back to Altoona for the first pitch right after this. Well, a festive atmosphere here tonight at Blair County Ballpark, as you could imagine. The All-Star Game being played right here in Altoona, Pennsylvania, an opportunity for the Altoona Curve organization to kind of show the world, uh, at least the folks in the Eastern League, just what they do on a nightly basis here during the baseball season. It is a fantastic place to watch baseball and to bring your family, and uh, we're looking forward to bringing you the game here tonight here in FSN Pittsburgh. J.D.? This is a beautiful ballpark, Staggy, and when you have all these fans in it, it's an unbelievable place. Great atmosphere here tonight. Take a look at the Northern Division All-Star lineup. Leading off and playing in center field, Denard Spann, Tyler Mingus in left, Adam Lind out of New Hampshire as the designated hitter, Michelle Abreu, the top hitter in the league right now at first base out of Binghamton, Bronson Sardinia of Trenton, Chad Spann with Portland, Curtis Thigpen with New Hampshire, and Felix Molina, New Britain, Gabe Lopez out of Trenton. Well, that's your lineup right there going against Shane Eumann of the Altoona Curve. And what a thrill it must be for him. And I'm sure he's got the butterflies going right now 
There's his record, 5-2, and two, that 1.57 ERA among the top in the Eastern League right now. Really amazing season that Human has had this year, Stoggy, beginning out of the bullpen and now getting an opportunity to start, and here he is in his home ballpark starting the Eastern League All-Star game. What a year it's been for Human, one that started out very uncertain for him. Denard Spann stands in, and he takes a strike in the outside corner. Spann hitting 303, nine homers and 42 runs batted in up to the All-Star break. One of three first round picks in this game of the Minnesota Twins. The ball fouled back 0 2. What to look for for Shane Newman is for him to keep the ball down. He's not a hard thrower. 87, 88 miles an hour. Really knows how to move the ball around the zone. Can almost lull you to sleep on the mound from that left side. Denard Span swings and misses. Good start for Shane Newman. One away here. Newman is a guy who does know how to pitch and he has very calm demeanor on the mound. He's a guy who does not get rattled and I think that's something that's a bit of a breakthrough for him because last year he had some problems mentally I think where he would uh, not be able to get through some adversity but he kind of broke through that barrier last year and then became a starter late in the year and was really uh, a big factor in the Curves drive to a playoff position last year in the Eastern League. Next hitter is Tyler Mingus out of Portland the double A affiliate of the Red Sox. He takes a ball down low. Of course, he came into the season talking about Shane Newman thinking he would be in the starting rotation. And as it turns out, he was bumped back into the bullpen after finishing off last season in such impressive fashion in August last year. 4-0, helping the curve get into the playoffs. He was a real big reason why. Two balls and no strikes on Tyler Mingus. There's the pitch. And this is Carlos Leon, the shortstop. On to Simon Pond who is a member of the curve and one of three position players in the starting lineup tonight two away. And now we're going to see a guy who I think will be playing uh, in Toronto before too long. The New Hampshire Fisher Cats one of the top players in the league this year. He's leading in many categories hitting 311 17 home runs. That's a league leading figure as is his RBI total of 65 runs batted in Adam Lind chance to maybe Get his name in the hat and uh, have an opportunity to win a triple crown in the Eastern League. Steige really among the top players in leading most all statistical categories in the Eastern League, including the big ones, average home runs, and he's uh, RBIs as well. He's third in the league in average at 311, but great numbers, leads the league with 102 hits, a really phenomenal player in the outfield in the Blue Jays organization. And the 0-1 misses. Well, Adam Lind is a guy who, they say he needed to work on his fielding so he would take extra reps in the outfield prior to games and we've seen him make some outstanding catches this year in left field for New Hampshire so he's improving defensively too. humans one one delivery and it's one and two read some of the reports on Adam Lind he's one of the best pure hitters in minor league baseball he was drafted in the third round by the Blue Jays out of the University of South Alabama and scouts rave about his swing he's got a beautiful swing from the left side of the plate has that perfect frame for an outfielder. That one misses outside. Two balls and two strikes on Adam Lynn. Two away here. The 2006 Eastern League All-Star Game. This is only the fourth All-Star Game played in this league, even though the league has been around for 83 years. The 2-2 pitch fouled away. And the third base coach down there almost grabbed that one with a bare hand. Todd Klaus had to get out of the way of that one qu quickly and knock that one down. The manager of the Portland Sea Dogs getting an opportunity to uh, <laughs> manage and he's uh, having a little fun with the crowd obviously. The managers tonight from the Portland Sea Dogs Todd Klaus because they won the Northern Division Championship in the league last year and because the Altoona curve of the host team Tim Leeper is in the home dugout tonight for the Southern Division. Here's the 2 2 delivery down low 3 and 2 and of course Klaus was the manager last year too because uh, he his team was the host team last year. The game was played in Portland at Hadlock Field last year. Swing and a miss. Shane Newman with a couple of strikeouts retires the side in order. An excellent first inning, and he will walk over to the dugout feeling pretty good about himself. And the South is coming to bat here. Back in a moment. Well you know it's a big crowd when you see folks sitting on the hillside here beyond the bleachers in left field. Let's get right to our Southern Division lineup. Pretty good ball player leading it off second baseman Ader Torres of the defending champion Akron Arrows and there's Vic Butler of the curve 
and one of the better hitters all year long. Brett Ronenberg also from Altoona. Kevin Kuzminoff is really raking right now for the Akron Arrows. Probably the top hitter in the league, although he hasn't had enough at bats. Corey Casto also hitting well for Harrisburg. Mike Rabello, the catcher out of Erie. First baseman Simon Pond from the curve. Corey Kaler, a buoy in right. And Carlos Leon, the shortstop from the Reading Phillies. And Nader Torres leads it off for the Southern Division against Chris Smith, right hander from the Portland Sea Dogs, whose record is 9 and 4 with a 3.19 earned run average. And Chris Smith is tied for the league lead and wins with his teammate Kaysen Gabbard. Ader Torres hitting 281, two homers and 34 runs batted in, swings and a little flare for a base hit into center field. So the Southern Division off and running here is Ader Torres, who can steal bases too, with 33 of them, second in the Eastern League in that department. And Tim Leeper was telling his guys before the game, we had the privilege of being in the locker room before the game to hear him speak to the players and he told them just play your game do what you want to do and I would think that Ader Torres will, will run here well 33 stolen bases second most in the league and you know he's going to be looking to try and read Chris Smith out of the Portland Sea Dogs and the Boston Red Sox organization and try and get out the second base for Vic Butler curve center fielder takes a strike in the outside corner he's second in the Eastern League with a 313 average what a year he's had and he leads the league in triples with 14 which is an Altoona curve record Previously held by Tyke Redman. And there goes Ader Torres and the throw down by catcher Curtis Thigpen is high. And Torres steals the base. We thought he would. So we already have a runner in scoring position here in the first inning for the Southern Division All-Stars. You know, looking at Chris Smith on the mound, Stoggy and the Red Sox organization really limping into this All-Star game over his last two games. He's allowed 13 earned runs in two starts. That's jumped his ERA from 227 up to 319. So I know he's looking to get off and have a very good inning here tonight. Rick Butler rolls one. That's Gabe Lopez from the Trenton Thunder on to first baseman. And it is a runner at third now as Ader Torres moved over to third on the play. Michelle Abreu is the first baseman. He is the top hitter in the league right now. Brett Ronenberg, another Altoona Curve member, swings and and it gets through beyond the glove of Gabe Lopez and the Southern Division take a one nothing lead as Ader Torres comes home with the first run. Well, that's Ronenberg. He likes to get up there and look for that first pitch and he found it from Chris Smith. Will take a look, ball down and away, and he just went right up the middle off the glove of the second baseman Lopez. A great effort there by Lopez, a gritty second baseman. But Ronenberg's a guy that he'll go up there and look for that first pitch and he got it. And great to see the curve contributing here in this first inning with Rick Butler moving that runner over to third after Torres stole the base and then Ronenberg knocking him home. And now a very good hitter Kevin Kuzminoff hitting 419. And there's a strike called Kuzminoff with nine homers and 39 runs batted in doesn't have enough at bats to qualify as the top hitter in the league right now. He's been bothered by a back injury and a hamstring problem. The injuries are kind of related but he is. Just amazing. And I'm Tim Leeper, we were talking about going into Akron. And they said, well, we know what we can do with Kuzman off. We think we can pitch him a certain way. And, and he just continues to hit the ball. It doesn't matter what you try to do to, to keep him off the bases. He finds a way to get on, although he's behind 0-2 now to Chris Smith. You mentioned not having enough plate appearances to qualify. He's only about 20 or so plate appearances shy. He was on the disabled list right before the All-Star break. So you figure in a few weeks after this All-Star break, he'll have his enough plate appearances to qualify for the league lead. Up and in with the 0 2 is Smith. We haven't had a guy flirt with 400 this late in a season in the Eastern League in a while. Jeff Keppinger, a former Pirate Farm hand who played here in Altoona, was hitting 400 into late June back in 2004. And uh, Kuzmanov flirting with 400 this year. Ronenberg running on the play, and Kuzmanov swinging and fouling it back. One ball and two strikes. Kuzminoff hurt himself last year and was in the Arizona Fall League. He was going for a foul ball in a dugout. And he slipped on the steps and his feet went right out from under him and he landed on his tailbone and he's had a problem with his back ever since. It's really amazing the job the Cleveland Indians do Stoggy of developing talent Kuzminov a number, another one of these guys who was drafted in the sixth round and has developed very well. I think the Indians do it as well as anybody in Major League Baseball developing players and a guy like Kevin Kuzminov a great example you look up and down 
that Akron club that they have, the top team in the league, really for three out of the last four years. It's no coincidence the job that they do. They defeated the Arrows or the uh, Altoona Curve last year. The Arrows did in the playoffs to win the championship. They ultimately went on and played Portland in the in the finals and beat them. Here's the one-two pitch. Kuzminov fouls it off. I think Kuzminov is a DH here, but as a third baseman, I think that injury has affected him too defensively. We saw in a game earlier this year when the Arrows were in town to play the curve, it, he had t trouble really bending down to field balls. I mean, that's how bad his back was. So he's really fighting that. One ball and two strikes. Brett Ronenberg takes his lead at first. Michelle Abreu holding him there. And that ball in the dirt. Interesting situation in the Northern Division, Stige. Curtis Thigpen, you see him on the left there of the Toronto Blue Jays organization and the New Hampshire Fisher Cats, is the only catcher for the Northern Division. A couple of injuries to Brian Munhall of the Connecticut Defenders and Andy Wilson of Binghamton leaving Curtis Thigpen as the only backstop for the Northern Division. 2-2 two -two pitch. Called strike three. Smith freezes Kuzman off. And two down here in the first inning. South leading one to nothing. Ader Torres scoring after singling, stealing second, moving over to third on a bounce out by Vic Butler. Coming home on a base hit by Brett Ronenberg of the curve. And this is another really good hitter, Corey Casto, the third baseman and slash outfielder of the Harrisburg Senators. He's been moved from third to the outfield recently, playing third tonight, hitting 287, 14 home runs, third in the league in that department, second in RBIs with 64. Well, Castro looks at a ball outside. And of course, Stigey, when you have a star third baseman that we saw in this league a year ago and Ryan Zimmerman, he's not going anywhere in the Nationals organization. So Castro having to make that move from third base to the outfield. Good pitch there from Chris Smith. One and one now. By the way, Curtis Thigpen behind the plate, as J.D. said, Michelle Abreu at first, Gabe Lopez at second, Chad Spann of Portland at third, Felix Molina of New Britain at short, Tyler Mingus of Portland in left, Denard Spann of New Britain in center, and Bronson Sardinia of the Trenton Thunder in right. Ball fouled away. Casto on the Nationals 40-man roster, so that means that he's certainly one of the higher, uh, highly thought of prospects in the Nationals organization, and certainly a guy that's moved very quickly and probably will continue to move after this season. Smith misses outside. Two balls and one strike. There was a threat of rain uh, going into the game tonight. It'll be interesting to see uh, how far we can get without any raindrops falling. We had a pretty hard rain this afternoon prior to the game, just before we had our celebrity home run derby. 2-1 pitch rolled out in front to the mound. Chris Smith makes the play to end the inning. The Southern Division break the ice. They lead it one to nothing after one full inning of play. Adrian Torres scoring the go-ahead run here. Second inning coming up. The 2006 Eastern League All-Star Game on FSN Pittsburgh is presented by UPMC Health Plan, where you belong, by Quaker Steak and Lube, voted Best Wings USA, and by the Allegheny Mountains Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome to the heart of the beautiful Alleghenies. Well, we see a new pitcher into the ballgame, Steige. Shane Newman only going one inning, very efficient. One, two, three inning, 12 pitches, and here you get a look at Nate Bumstead, he's only in his third professional season in the Tigers organization. Bumstead, 6'3 and 190 pounds. We go from one LSU Tiger to another. Shane Newman played his college baseball at LSU, and as did Nate Bumstead. And uh, Bumstead, a guy in the Tigers organization that comes in with a 6-6 six six record, a 378 ERA, late addition to the Southern Division squad, Staggy. And the top hitter in the Eastern League right now, Michelle Abreu, hitting 335. Bounces one left side. Nice play is short by Carlos Leon. Can he get him? He will not. And Abreu reaches on an infield single off of Nate Bumstead. Brings Boy. up Bronson Sardinia. Real nice play by Leon to show some great range in the hole at shortstop. Just couldn't quite get enough on that throw over to first base. As you look at Bumstead, Got that good frame, 6'3", that's what you like, the tall, lean right-handers. And Bumstead, as we mentioned, has moved very quickly, only his third professional season. And 
15 and 5 and a 2.43 ERA over his first two pro seasons will get you to Double A in only three years, which is a very quick jump for a minor league player to make. He's pitched well against the Altoona curve this year too for the Erie Sea Wolves, and that was a breaking ball, nicely thrown in there. And Bronson Sardinia swings and misses. Big year for this guy, Steige. Bronson Sardinia, former first-round pick of the Yankees. It's his third go-round in the Eastern League, and is putting together a pretty good year. The 0-1 delivery outside. And Sardinia, a guy who's had a kind of a roller coaster season as we look at the roller coaster here in right field. And he had a tough uh, first month of the season. One of those numbers on him, J.D., I know he's been up and down. The 1-1 pitch. And there is a strike called 1-2. and two. Yeah, it's really been an up and down season this year for Sardinia. He hit below 200 in the first month of the year, then got his average up well over 300 in May, hitting 323 during that month, and then back under 200 in the month of June. So really a roller coaster year appropriate than to be playing in the All-Star game with that big roller coaster, the Skyliner, right behind the right field wall. Two balls and two strikes on the left-handed batter, Brunson Sardinia. He's the right fielder out of the Trenton Thunder. And the Yankees double A affiliate on the pitch misses outside three and two get an all eerie battery here with Mike Ribello the catcher and Nate Bumstead on the mound of course they know each other very well working together this year up in Erie who came into the league with the Altoona curve back in 1999 there goes Abreu and the ball fouled off We've got a good situation affiliate wise up in Erie Stuggy I know we got some uh, viewers up that way and of course, they started out when they came to the Eastern League in 1999. Erie was a Anaheim Angels affiliate, but now the affiliation that they have now with the Detroit Tigers makes a lot more sense. And you see all those players that are really making a difference for the first place Tigers this year came through Erie. Sardinia draws a walk. And we're going to throw it down to Steve Degler, the voice of the Reading Phillies. Degs? All right, Stoggy, thank you very much. With Eastern League President Joe McCatherine and Joe Altoona hosting the All-Star Game this year, what are some of the qualities that the front office puts together that makes it such an attractive venue? Well, as great as the front office is and as great as the ballpark is here, it's really the community, the fans, and the business community that steps up and sponsors sports at all. But it's just a wonderful time. They're, they're embraceless, they're warm, they make us feel right at home. So we're real pleased to be here. So how far, how, how have they done so far pulling this thing off this year? Unbelievable. They took a new approach. They used the ballpark for the big gala event last night, and what a great way to show off what they have here. Great ballpark here at Blair County. Can you explain a little bit how much work these guys have to go through just putting this together for one or two nights of fun? It's an 18-month project. It really is, and, and it, it ramps up at 12 months, and the three or four weeks before before the game are just a detail, 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 and the 18, 20 hours a day. All right, Joe, thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks for having me. Eastern League President Joe McCathin, let's go back upstairs to Steige and J.D. Chad Spann of the Portland Sea Dogs is at the plate. No balls and two strikes. Joe McCathin actually makes his home in Portland. That's where the office is for the Eastern League, so he gets to live in one of the nicest cities in this circuit. And... Uh, He's a good guy and a guy who works extremely hard. And he talked about the hard work put in here. And believe me, the curve staff works so hard. Tireless workers, all of them. And there's a one two pitch two and two now on Chad Spann, 22 year old third baseman who's uh, fifth in the Eastern League with an average of 303 nine homers, 42 runs batted in. Portland Sea Dogs lead the Northern Division. They have the exact same winning percentage as the curve 591 at the All Star break. And we have runners at first and second. Michelle Abreu at second. Bronson Sardinia at first. And the count holds a two and two. Portland, beautiful part of the country, isn't it? Oh, it's Maine, a just a great place to go up. Altoona Curve have an opportunity to go up there every year. And I know you had your uh, lobster roll st uh, stolen up there, didn't you, Staggy? Yes, yeah, the seagull. birds. The birds don't like you up there. No, the seagull stole it last year when I was up there. Two two foul down the third base line. And you know, you know, I'll know now when I go to the Lobster Shack on the shores of uh, <laughs> the Atlantic up there in, in Two Lights, Maine. That you got to watch out for that seagull that hangs around. It's not as bad as my uh, experience last year at the All Star Game, sitting at uh, world famous Gilbert's right up there on the uh, right on the bay, and I just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time when the seagull flew by, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so you think your story's bad? <laughs> it's not a fun thing to have happen. New piece of timber for Chad Spann. It's really neat about Portland too, Steige, their ballpark at Hadlock Field. They actually have a replica green monster in left field. Really neat. They built their ballpark, have the same dimensions basically as they have at Fenway Park. And I know that is big for the uh, left fielders trying to learn how to uh, play balls off that wall. Runners move up. 
Well, hey, fans, you can get the hottest new Altoona Curve merchandise online at www.curvestore.com. Whether it's hats, T-shirts, novelty items, and other Curve gear, it's available at curvestore.com. So log on to curvestore.com and get your favorite Curve merchandise items from your home computer. That's curvestore.com. Three balls and two strikes on Chad Spann. First base is open. Now it isn't, and the bases are loaded. So Nate Bumstead having a tough time here in his inning of work. His club leading one to nothing, but nobody out here in the second inning. And Curtis Thigpen, the catcher of the Northern Division All-Stars. Well, that's 15 pitches without recording it out so far. And Steiger, you and I both talked to Tim Leeper before the game, the curve manager managing the Southern Division. He's got three pitchers that likely are not able to pitch tonight. So he needs some efficient innings. And the last thing he wants is a guy to have a rough inning like Bumstead has started out like here, giving the bases loaded on a hit and two walks. Curtis Thigpen from the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. And that's a foul ball. Thigpen out of the University of Texas participated in three College World Series and was with the national champions in 04. Second round pick of Toronto in 2004. One thing to watch for Bumstead here, which is really interesting, Steige, is the watch when he throws his pitch. We'll let our viewers see kind of the hitch in his delivery. Yeah, definitely. And a good play there by Leon to Torres for the force to throw on. Nice play by Ader Torres to turn the double play. That was beautiful. Carlos Leon and Ader Torres, they don't work together every day, but you wouldn't know it by that play. That's highlight reel material there. Well, that won't be an RBI, obviously, for Thigpen, but he does get the runner home from third base. Just a phenomenal play between Leon and Torres. And one thing, if you don't watch double-A baseball or aren't familiar with it, you're going to see some major league type plays. These guys generally, they can play at this level. They can play in the major leagues as well. The big key, though, Steige, you and I know from seeing a lot of these games, is consistency. Major League players make that play consistently. Double-A guys can make the play, but sometimes not as uh, frequently as the Major League guys might. This is Felix Molina. Simon Pond can't get it. That's a base hit, and another run comes home. So it's now 2-1, to one, Northern Division All-Stars. Bronson Sardinia scoring. Molina aboard with a base hit. And the number nine hitter in the lineup, second baseman Gabe Lopez. So it's 2-1 Northern Division as they put two on the board here in the top of the second inning off of Nate Bumstead. Two away. And Felix Molina at first base. Gabe Lopez, a guy with a great eye. His numbers, uh, walk, walks to strikeout ratio, just amazing, really. He has 50 walks, 39 strikeouts this year. And on his career now, 226 walks, 208 strikeouts. Those are amazing numbers. No balls and one strike on Gabe Lopez. Second baseman from the Trenton Thunder. There goes the runner, Molina, the throw down. He's in there. Throw by Mike Rabello. Well, Rebello. these guys haven't been shy tonight, have they? No, they haven't. And I, you figured they would do this. They're having some fun. Rabello has thrown out over 50% of opposing base stealers. And he was complimenting uh, his pitching staff in Erie for holding runners extremely well. And then one of those members of that staff is the guy on the mound right there, but the base was stolen. Foul away. Nate Bumstead, of course, from the Seawolves. I wouldn't think that hitch in his delivery that you know, we've seen in this inning would lend him very well to holding runners on. And you saw that time Molina getting a great jump. A 1 2 just misses. We think about some of the pitchers that Erie has had the last couple of years. Just last year, Justin Verlander, star in the making in Detroit, and Joel Zamaya. Both of those guys topping out radar guns around the Eastern League last year, 99, 100 miles per hour. 2-2 two, two pitch down low, 3-2. and two. And I was talking to Mike Rabello, the catcher today. I was asking him, who's the nastiest of all those pitchers? And he said, Joel Zamaya. He said he throws the ball 100 miles an hour. He said he really throws it 100 miles an hour. And he said the hitters are really intimidated by him. And unlike Verlander, who was a very high draft pick, Zamaya 17th round. 3-2 pitch hit into the gap. Brett Ronenberg on the run, can't make the catch. And a run comes home. It's now three to one. Into second base with a double is Gabe Lopez. Ronenberg made a good try, went off the leather, I think, and skipped out onto the warning track. 
Dave Lopez. Well, that ball was grooved by Nate Bumstead, and he gave it a good ride into the left center field gap here at Blair County Ballpark. So a tough inning for Nate Bumstead, and we go to the top of the order in Denard Spann, who struck out swinging against Shane Eumann in the first. Ray Searage, the curve pitching coach, and pitching coach, of course, for the Southern Division All-Stars, is going to have a word with Nate Bumstead. Boy, what a great guy Ray Searage is, a guy who pitched in the major leagues for seven seasons, made his major league debut with the New York Mets. You see him walking out to the mound, one of the great guys in baseball, and he has a wealth of knowledge. Interestingly, his son, Ryan, plays in the Pirates organization. He plays for the Williamsport Crosscutters, short season Class A affiliate in the Pirates organization. And so I know we have both talked to Ray throughout the season, an opportunity perhaps in a few years that he might be the pitching coach on a team in which his son plays outfield on. The umpires tonight, Tim Donald behind the plate, Fran Burke is at first, Chris Schultz at second, and Tim Davis is at third. And the home plate umpire, Tim Donald, breaks up the party on the mound, and Denard Spann will get a, an opportunity here with two down. Felix Molina scoring on the double by Gabe Lopez. And Spann takes a ball inside. One ball and no strikes. Saw a really nice block that time by Rebello, keeping the runner at second base. One of the outstanding throwing catchers in the Eastern League, Steige, throwing out 51% of opposing base runners. If you can throw out 35 to 40%, that's a good number, but he's over 50%. Really an amazing number behind the plate, Mike Rebello. And he's, you know, managed by Duffy Dyer. Former pirate catcher. That's right. Who had the honor of catching John Candelari as no hitter many years ago. And Rebella was saying that Dyer is an old school manager. And he said he gets more of a thrill out of me throwing a runner out or blocking a ball at the plate than he does me getting a hit. There's a swing and a miss by Span. And it's now one and two on the center fielder of the Northern Division All Stars. That all that uh, no hitter that you talked about, John Candelari, 30 years ago now. 1976 coming up in August. So that's been a long time now, and it was Duffy Dyer behind the plate, the last individual no-hitter in Pirates history. Breaking ball, misses inside. Two balls and two strikes on Denard Span. Matt Garza and Glenn Perkins are a couple of pitchers in this game from the New Britain Rockcats, who are also former first-round picks of the Minnesota Twins. A 2-2 pitch outside. And Bumstead really having a tough time here in the second inning. 31 pitches now he's thrown. So this obviously will be his only inning of work and certainly hasn't gone the way he would like, giving up three runs already in the frame. And he misses inside, ball four. That's his third walk of the inning. And now we have runners at first and second with two down for Tyler Mingus, who bounced to short his first time up. Mingus, the left fielder from the Portland Sea Dogs. Well, walks have been a problem this year for Bumstead, second in the league, giving up 51 of them. And I know he's got the nerves probably going tonight, pitching in this Eastern League All Star game. But walks, just not a problem tonight. It's one that he's had to battle all season long. And there's that hitch again in the delivery. That's an interesting observation on your part, JD. You don't really see that very often. He kind of double clutches, if you will. Here's the 1-0. Angus comes up empty there and was 1-0 Southern Division, but three runs on the board here for the North. And the 1-1 pitch in the dirt. The North won last year in Portland 9-6. In the first three All-Star games, 12 hometown batters are 9 for 28, 321 average coming into this game here tonight. So guys who play for the hometown team have had an effect uh, in these games. And last year it was Kenny Perez who was the hometown hero of the Portland Sea Dogs. He doubled in a couple of runs late in the game, ended up scoring what proved to be the game winning run. Two balls and two strikes on Tyler Mingus. Three and two. Earlier this year, Tyler Mingus was hit by a pitch from Blaine Neal. And he hit him so hard that the ball ricocheted off of his helmet and went back out behind the pitcher's mound. And Mingus 
Needless to say left the game. Here's the three two pitch fouled up the third base line. And the count holds the runners were going. Tell you what a lot of pitches that's still thrown in this inning by Nate Bumstead approaching 40. This is the fifth time now that he has gone full on a batter in this inning. So he's really had to work very hard in this inning. Payoff pitch on the way to Tyler Mingus. And he loads the bases. And Tim Leeper is going to go out and get Tyler Mingus right here. You know, this isn't something that uh, Tim wants to do. He obviously wants every guy to have an opportunity to pitch a full inning, but Bumstead just threw too many pitches here tonight. Well, we'll take a break. They've loaded the bases again. Four walks for Nate Bumstead. And we'll be back to see what Adam Lynn can do against a new pitcher in just a moment. Well, another member of the Erie Seawolves pitching staff comes on now. Brian Rogers, 23 year old right hander, selected by Detroit in the 11th round of the 2003 draft out of Georgia Southern University, native of Dallas, Texas. He's held Eastern League batters at just a 197 average against in his first 31 relief outings. A tall right hander, 6'3, 190 pounder. Brian Rogers, you see his record. And he is facing a pretty tough hitter right here. One of the toughest hitters in the Northern Division lineup. Yeah, no question about it. Not an easy situation to step into with two outs and the bases loaded and trying to clean up the mess that his teammate Nate Bumstead left out on the mound throwing nearly 40 pitches really working hard tonight and Rogers who has some very good numbers this year used to coming into this role. He is not a starting pitcher. He is a reliever. So this is a situation that he's very comfortable coming into. Adam Lind is the batter who struck out swinging his first time up and Simon Pond makes the play at first and the inning comes to a merciful end. It's now a 3 1 lead for the Northern Division All Stars four walks in the inning three hits and we'll be back in just a moment. Back at Blair County Ballpark in Altoona, going to the bottom of the second inning. The North leading the South 3-1, to one, and the president and managing partner of the Altoona Curve, Chuck Greenberg, stopping by. And how much credit does your staff get for putting all this together? Uh, they're, I tell you, they're about 100 on a scale of 1 to 10. They've worked so hard to put this event together. The game of the last night, the ball game tonight, everything's coming up beautifully. I couldn't be more proud of them. And you throw in the opening of the State College Spikes as well this year. It's been a busy, busy time for you and your franchises. Yeah, it sure has been. And, you know, we've had a ball. We operate as one integrated operation, and State College is going great. This is the culmination of an outstanding year we're having in Altoona. What can you say about this community and the surrounding area, the support they've given you over the last several years? Well, it's just off the charts. The relationship between this community and the ball club is like none I've ever seen before. we got a wonderful ballpark. The community, the extended community is so proud of it. Great support here in and around the ballpark in Altoona. Can't say enough about our fans. And what about your relationship with the Pirates as well? Oh, it's outstanding. I mean, the Pirates have been so good to us. We've been in the playoffs three years in a row. Hopefully uh, get another shot this year. Uh, they've been wonderful to us, and uh, it's just a great relationship all around. Chuck, thanks a lot. Congratulations on a great night. Thank you, Steve. Thank all right, you. guys, back upstairs to you. All right, thank you, Diggs. Uh, strike in the outside corner from Chris Smith on his second inning of work here. Mike Rabello leads it off, number six hitter. Six, seven, and eight hitters do up here for the Southern Division team as Rabello pops one up left side. Chad Spann of the Portland Sea Dogs makes the catch and one away. Interesting that Chris Smith gets an opportunity to come out for a second inning of work. Of course, his manager with the Portland Sea Dogs is Todd Klaus in the dugout. And of course, a lot goes into these decisions. How many innings each of these guys can pitch, depending on when their next start is, when their last start is. A lot of these guys would be throwing their sideline day today if they were normally continuing on with the rotation. We did not have an all-star break, but obviously Todd Klaus feeling very comfortable throwing his right hander Chris Smith out there for a second inning of work and so far Tim Leeper has set it up to go one 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 and one right through first appearance for Simon Pond of the Altoona curve a veteran 29 years old first baseman one of the top fielding first baseman in the league and he is a guy who obviously is one of the better hitters in the league too with a 286 average fourth in RBIs in the league with 54 coming into the All Star break go and two on him already here for Chris Smith. Pond with a unique stance at the plate as a former major leaguer. He played 16 games with Toronto in 04. Native of North Vancouver, British Columbia. And a roller to the right side. He's going to be picked up by Gabe Lopez. And did he get him? No. Thought maybe Abreu may have been able to tag Pond going by, but he missed him. So Simon Pond reaches on an infield single. 
The ball really took a while to get out to Lopez that time, didn't it? He had to really race in, and Pond is not a guy that has a lot of speed, but Lopez having to race in, and of course the infield uh, cut very well, cut very low, and plays very well, and these infielders certainly, Lopez has played some games here this year, but that time didn't seem like he read the ball all that well. And Corey Kaler of the Bowie Bay Sox, double-A affiliate of the Baltimore Orioles. One ball and no strikes on Corey Kaler. Denard Span of New Britain coming on as is left fielder Tyler Mingus. He'll make the catch. And two away here in the second inning. Northern Division leading three to one. Well, there you see it, Steige, the beautiful Skyliner roller coaster. We saw Deggs on that earlier today. Got to cool off. It's kind of a uh, warm, humid night here at the ballpark. And no better way to cool off than by riding that beautiful roller coaster, the Skyliner from neighboring Lakemont Park. When they built this ballpark, they did it right. No question about it. It's the only ballpark uh, in the Eastern League that has a, an upper deck. And seats uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,700 uh, fixed seats, but uh, we can get over 9,000 in the ballpark. One ball and no strikes on Carlos Leon, the shortstop. And I think there's somewhere in the number of 9,000 here for the All-Star game. There's a base hit the opposite way for Carlos Leon. And now the South have runners at first and second with two down. And the top of the order, Ader Torres, who singled, stole second, moved to third on a bounce out by Vic Butler, and then came home on a single by Brett Ronenberger. The curve will come up to the plate for his second appearance of the ball game. Ader Torres of the Akron Arrows. One and oh. Now Torres is a guy that has a very good double play partner in Akron by the name of Ivano Choa, two very good defensive players, and that's part of the reason why Akron has one of the best pitching staffs. Not only do they have very good pitchers, obviously, but two very good middle infielders in back of that very good staff, and we'll see a couple of those Akron pitchers in this ball game here tonight. The thing about the Akron Arrows who won the championship last year is that their players have come up through the ranks. They played at Kinston together and then they play together in Akron. So they're so familiar with one another. It's a double play combination that's been together as they've climbed the ladder in the uh, farm system of the Cleveland Indians. Two balls and one strike the count on Ader Torres. Simon Pond at second Carlos Leon at first. Leon representing the tying run here with Ader Torres at the plate. We're going to see a different pitcher in every inning uh, for the Southern Division team. And I know J.D. mentioned that Tim Lieber really didn't want to have to come out and pull a pitcher as he did with Bumstead. Smith can't make the play. Gabe Lopez will. On to Felix Molina. Now the throw back to third and Simon Pond is out. So they didn't get the runner at second, but they get Pond at third. And the inning is over without the Southern Division able to get any runs across. They still trail three to one as we go to the third. Well it is an amusement park atmosphere here at Blair County Ballpark because of that amusement park out beyond right field as J.D. was saying and it feels that way even in the ballpark sometimes too with the curve putting on entertaining things between every inning. There's never a dull moment in this place. We go to the third inning and that means that Jason Dombach is going to call the pitches for you J.D. All right Steiger we had Brian Rogers who finished up that inning in the top half of the second in which the Northern Division sent nine men to the plate. Nate Bumstead had to be chased from the ball game. And so Brian Rogers, who got that final out on a ground out, getting Adam Lind, leaving the bases loaded, but still three runs in for the Northern Division as we go to the third inning. And Rogers will face the man who led it off in that big second inning, Michelle Abreu, on a swing and a miss. 
Tim Leeper is on the headsets down in the dugout. Leeper, are you there? Hi, Stuggy. How you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good. How you doing, man? Real good. Now, I know you didn't want to have to take a pitcher out of this game, but uh, just got to the point where you had to do it, I guess. Huh? Yeah, that was awful. You know, he really battled, and, uh, you know, he, he's, he's got a pitch in a couple days, and, and we had to get 40 pitches, but we got to make the most out of all our pitches right now because we got enough just for nine innings. So uh, he battled. The nice thing was Rogers came in and got a ground ball on the first pitch, so that really bailed us out right there. Hey, Leap, this is J.D. We'll get to you after this next pitch. There's a check swing, and they'll say he goes. So Abreu is out on strikes. Talk about your starting pitcher tonight, Shane Newman. We get to see him every night, and maybe not a name familiar to Pirate fans, maybe watching tonight on FSN Pittsburgh. But Shane Newman, the inning that he had, I guess, is kind of a microcosm of the entire season he's had, isn't it? Yeah, it was great. And he was pumped up tonight, and it was great for him to go get the ball in his home, in his home stadium and, and do it in front of the home crowd. You know, a 1.5 ERA at the All-Star break is, is pretty darn good. And, you know, he is a guy that, you know, guys and people in Pittsburgh can look at and, and see there's some young guys coming up that may be able to help him out. And, you know, there's no shortage of left-handed pitching in our organization, but Shane's definitely a good one as well. Deggs has a question for Leib. Go ahead, Deggs. Tim, Steve Degler, uh, the year Vic Butler has had, uh, how big has it been for you guys at the top of your lineup and defensively in center field? Huge. I mean, every, and you hit on both aspects right there. At center field, he's been outstanding. He takes charge. He makes all the plays. He goes gap to gap, makes great throws, never misses a cutoff man. And offensively, you know, he's got 14 triples, which I think by far leads any any professional baseball and uh, you know just seems to get big hits you know in the first inning tonight again he rolls a ground ball to second base with the runner and second nobody out and that's the kind of stuff he's done for us all season long. Bronson Sardinia at the plate the New York Yankee farmhand walked and scored in that second inning yeah. and takes a ball yeah, right. outside and so Sardinia is aboard he's walked twice and Brian Rogers Walking a man after one out. Chad Spann of the Portland Sea Dogs will stand in. Talk about this atmosphere here at Leap tonight at the ballpark. Of course, you managing the Altoona Curve. You've had the opportunity to play some games and manage games in front of huge crowds, but just this overall atmosphere here at the ballpark. Talk about how great it is to have the fan support that you have here in Altoona. And is what this night means to you. Oh, it's great. You know, it's better than you expected, too. I mean, you know, you know the All-Star game is going to be fun, but, you know, anything Chuck Greenberg and, and Todd Parnell are involved in, they seem to make it a whole lot better. You know, it started yesterday when we got here. You know, guys were driving up to the ballpark in Hummers. You know, they had limousines. We came here. We had great food. The Eddie Money concert was outstanding. They did the fireworks last night, and then today with the golf tournament, you know, still getting the players from point A to point B. Everything has been comfortable for these guys, and it's been great. And then you get on the field, and, you know, making out that lineup card today was tremendous. You know, you're sitting there. You're looking, you got Butler second, Eider, Eider Torres leading off, Butler second, you know, Ronenberg, <laughs> and being able to plug in a 400 hitter in your four hole, you know, that's like a dream come true. And you just look at the Christmas of the play out here and you see the double plays that have just been turned. The one we turned right there in the second was incredible. And, you know, it just makes the whole day has been great, you know, from the ballpark to the people around the ballpark and to these players. The guys we have are, are quality guys. They're a lot of fun to be around. When you get the cream of the crop, you seem to get the best guys too. And these guys are outstanding. I've had a, had a great day with them. Brian Rogers striking out Chad Spann there for the second out of the inning, and we'll get a chance to see Curtis Thigpen, the catcher of the New Hampshire Fisher Cats, hit into a double play, but that double play brought home the first run of that Northern Division top half of the second inning as they lead it 3-1. to one. Again, Tim Leeper, manager of the Altoona Curve and the Southern Division, joining us in the booth right now, in the uh, dugout, rather. And, uh, Leap, talk about the biggest challenge that you have managing an all-star team. Well, right now, I mean, everything's easy. It's easy with the position players. Right now, it's just with the pitching. I'm, I'm just concerned. I, I hated for Nate to go out there, and, you know, he, he reached, got close to 40 pitches, and I did, just wanted to get him out of there. And like I said, I know he's got a pitch in a couple days, and I know it's against us, too, so maybe I actually should have left him out there for about 80. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's right. Hey, you're going Rogers. You're going eight. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing. I just want to get these guys through innings. I, I don't want to hurt them. I want, I want to get them back to their team in one piece, and that, that's the biggest thing right now. Other than that, we're having a ball. Well, you can see uh, the personality that Tim Lee has and he's been a real nice addition to the curve organization for that very reason and I know the players have a great amount of respect for you Leap. you've been at the triple-a level and the class a level but this is almost like a mini major league level right here isn't it in Altoona with the crowds we get and just the the big scoreboard out there and I think the players probably have a pretty good feeling about playing here in that respect uh, they love playing here and you know there's a reason we're 30 and 13 at home and, and a lot of it has to do with all the peripheral stuff you know it's not just coming here and coming to a beautiful ballpark but it's the fans it's the front office and it is coming in here every night actually and having a great environment I, I, even the cold days in April and May you know we still had three or four thousand people and and they were loud and, and they're behind us and I've I've never met a better group of fans who's so pro their team and uh, you know as much as I mess up they still manage to stay off me and, <laughs> and I appreciate that but it's a fun place for these guys to play they feel appreciated here the front office makes them feel like big leaguers and you know because of that we go out there and we play well.
Of course, a uh, little trivia that our Pittsburgh viewers might be interested in with uh, Tim Leeper is that he was Jason Bay's first manager in professional baseball. And you, you have every bit of credit to do with that, don't you, Leeper? Well, you know, the, the other thing is Jason Bay has never failed except for a one-month period in Jupiter, and I was his manager there then. <laughs> you know, so he got – Evens it out. Yeah, exactly. He got sent down to Clinton after that and hit 360. So, I, <laughs> obviously, I did something good the first year. I was absolutely horrible for him the second year, but it seems it's worked out pretty well for him. What, what, what was your opinion when you saw him in Vermont when you first had him? I mean, what kind of guy? Was he just another guy? Was he a prospect? What, what was your thoughts on well, him as manager? The funny thing is, is he really came with no instructions. He was he was a low-round pick, and he was a Canadian kid with a, with a visa problem, and he got there late. And, and fortunately for him, one of the day, on the day he showed up, one of our guys who was a higher-round pick got hurt, and it kind of opened up a spot for him. And, you know, when he got in, he, he kept getting hits. He was a great, one of the best base runner I probably ever coached, and he, he made things happen. He scored a lot of runs and, and did a lot of good things. And, you know, we tried to find different positions for him to keep getting them at bats, and, you know, it just kept working out where, you know, an outfielder got hurt or, or you know, he was able to DH enough, and, and he had a great year. And, uh, you know, it was totally by surprise, but every time you went out and saw you saw him play, you're like, hey, you know, this guy's pretty good. And, and you know, he just kept it on, you know, and, and he probably wasn't afforded the luxury of having a lot of bad months or bad weeks because, you know, he didn't come with a lot of fanfare, and he wasn't a high-round draft choice. And, you know, with the exception of the, of the one month in Jupiter, uh, that, that he struggled through the minor leagues. This guy's hits, and then when he got to the big leagues, he didn't miss a beat. He hasn't. He hasn't stopped since. Three and two, the count on Curtis Thigpen. So we'll see the runner Sardinia running at first base. Simon Pond of the Altoona Curve playing behind and a swing and a miss, strike three. So Brian Rogers gets out of the inning, allowing a walk. Hey Tim, thanks a lot for spending a few moments with us, and uh, good luck. Have fun managing the rest of this game. All right, you guys enjoy it too. Thanks, I appreciate it. Tim Leeper, manager of the Altoona Curve, joining us. We'll go to the bottom of the third with the North up 3-1. Beautiful Blair County ballpark in Altoona, the Northern Division with a three-run second inning, and they have the 3-1 lead. We'll get a look at a new pitcher as Chris Smith, the starter of the Northern Division, went two innings, gave up that run in the first inning to the south, but then came back with a scoreless second inning, and we get a look at a guy who was drafted in the first round by the Minnesota Twins only one year ago, Matt Garza. He's got a lot of flair, this guy. We saw him around the ballpark last night at the uh, gala, and uh, you can tell he's a man with a lot of personality. 25th overall in 2005, he was selected by Minnesota. Rated by Baseball America as the number seven prospect in the Twins organization entering the season. He's holding Eastern League batters to just a 190 average against. And he's gone eight scoreless innings in each of his last two starts heading into the All-Star game. Well, he is a strikeout pitcher for sure. Began the season in the Florida State League at Fort Myers where he struck out 53 batters in 44 and a third innings. And then Steige, you look at some of the numbers that he's put up this year. Nine or more strikeouts in four of his ten starts with New Britain. And we should point out that it is extremely rare to see a guy at the double-A level after being drafted last year. So he has made a very quick move through the Minnesota Twins organization and certainly a guy that they like a lot. In fact, they have four former first-round picks on that New Britain club. And three of them are Eastern League All-Stars. We'll get a look later on at left-handed pitcher Glenn Perkins and the leadoff hitter in the Northern Division, Denard Spann, also a first-round pick. So we talked earlier about how well the Cleveland Indians do at developing players. And you can say the same about the Minnesota Twins, a smaller market club, is Vic Butler of the curve. Grounds one to shortstop. Felix Molina, teammate of the pitcher, Matt Garza, throws on to first to get Butler by a step and one away here in the third inning. Well, right now, let's uh, go down below and see what Steve Degler has for us. Dex? All right, J.D., thank you very much. Actually, on the second deck here at Blair County Ballpark, looking down in an area just for the kids here. Not everybody wants to sit, everyone wants to sit down and watch the game so the youngsters can golf, they can go in the moon bounce, they can do the speed pitch, and they can do all kinds of stuff at the playland down there. So this is just a tremendous place for the family here at Blair County Ballpark, and the kids having a great time here during the 2006 Eastern League All-Star Game in the Giant Eagle jamboree back to you guys you're not in the uh, bounce house right now steve are you because you know there's a height limit in there uh, especially the weight limit i think is the problem <laughs> for me <laughs> all right thanks a lot degs uh, traveling around the ballpark and showing us some of the great sights from tonight's 2006 upmc health plan eastern league all-star game in this beautiful blair county ballpark opened up eight years ago in 1999 is brett ronenberg who plays every day here for the curve fouls one back Ronenberg was in the All-Star game two years ago with the Portland Sea Dogs. He's a veteran guy, Australian native, great personality. Pretty much what you would expect from an Australian. Kind of an easy guy. Has a great time 
playing the game of baseball, swing and a miss, and kind of a hero back in Australia, especially after the 2004 Olympics. He was on the Australian team that won the silver medal in Athens, Greece, and he was also a member of the World Baseball Classic team for Australia prior to the year as Ronenberg hits one into left center field, a base hit. His second hit of the game, he drove in a run in the first. Now Ronenberg showing his ability to go the other way and got that one over the head of the shortstop Felix Molina, and so a one-out single for Ronenberg, as Steige mentioned, two for two in the ball game, and another look at Kevin Kuzminov. Kuzminov batting 419, just an amazing season that he has put together for the Akron Arrows, a third baseman. He's been beset by some injury problems that have prevented him from putting up enough plate appearances to qualify among the league leaders in batting. Garza from the stretch, and here's a pitch driven deep down the right field line. This will slice fouling out of play right into that bullpen deck down the right field line. It's kind of a hot, humid, muggy night here at Blair County Ballpark. And as we talked about earlier, we did have some heavy rainfall just about two hours before the game, but we were able to get that through and able to get underway on time with tonight's All-Star game. Kuzmanov, a right-handed hitter, bounces one foul wide of third. Well, highlighting the Altoona Curves award-winning promotional schedule this season is the very unique Curve Retro Celebrity Series. You can join the Curve at Blair County Ballpark for upcoming retro celebrity appearances on Tuesday, July 25th with Adam West, Bernie Koppel, the doctor from Love Boat on Tuesday, August 8th, and Don Wells, Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island on August 22nd. Check out all the remaining Curve Retro Celebrity Series appearances. You can uh, log on to AltoonaCurve.com for more information. Don Wells, huh? Uh, I, I know you're looking uh, forward that to that. Is, I know you've had to be. You, JD is a guy who <laughs> watched every television show that. <laughs> <laughs> I always like Mary Ann. What a great promotion that. We've had here at Blair County Ballpark throughout the year the Retro Celebrity Series bringing 11. I don't know if they enjoy being called retro celebrities, but well recognized names. Line drive caught. They'll try to double off at first base, but Ronenberg able to get back. A nice snare that time by the third baseman Chad Spann of Portland. A ball hit hard by Kuzmina, but right at the third baseman, two away. But the idea was to bring in the stars that you grew up watching on television. Jerry Mathers, Adam West, Sherman Hemsley, of course, was George Jefferson, Greg Brady. They've all been here at Blair County Ballpark this year, and just a great promotion season long here at Blair County Ballpark. The Curve Retro Celebrity Series. Two outs, here's Corey Costo of the Harrisburg Senators, and he takes a fastball outside. Matt Garza, a guy that can throw it pretty hard, 93 miles an hour on that last pitch. Again, only his first full professional season, drafted out of Fresno State a year ago. See if Casto held his swing there. They appeal down to third, and they say he did hold his swing. So two balls and no strikes. A man at first base and two outs here in the bottom half of the third inning. The Northern Division, a three-run top half of the second inning, and they lead it three to one. Now time called that time by Corey Costo. Corey Costo originally a Montreal Expo. Drafted by the third round in 03 by Montreal. Boy, a real good hitter in the Nationals organization. Big overhand breaking ball and a beauty that time by Garza. Two and one the count on Corey Casto. As we talked about earlier, began the season at third base for Harrisburg, but because they've got Ryan Zimmerman, a future star, he's already a star in Washington. They've decided to move Casto back to his normal position, his position that he played in college at the University of Portland in the outfield. Ball downstairs, three and one, and had a chance to talk to Casto about a month or so ago and he said hey you know what I can't do anything about that I have to play myself into a position to get to the major leagues and I think that sometimes we get caught up Steige and worrying about who's at the major league level ahead of these guys they have to prove themselves at double A and then triple A and the major league organization can make that decision at that time ball four low and so Costo has done a great job this year getting on base he leads the league in on base percentage and he shows why there as he takes a ball downstairs, so two men on with two outs, and Mike Ribello of the Erie Seawolves will come to the plate. 
We're getting to the point of the ball game in another inning or two where Stige and I's score sheets are just going to go out the window, I'm sure, because uh, we both do the game in pen, and we're going to have a lot of changes coming up. We've already seen three pitchers for the Southern Division, and Matt Garza, the second for the North. Got some activity down the left field line in the Northern Division bullpen as well. So this likely guards his only inning of work is Mike Rebello, a switch hitter. Got to love a switch hitting catcher. And Rebello, a guy that certainly, as we talked about earlier, has the great ability to throw out runners. Question is, how well will he hit at the major league level? And a slow roller out to second should be handled easily that time by Ader Torres. Throws on to first and the... Southern Division is done in the third inning. No runs, one hit, one walk, and two men left on base. We'll go to the fourth inning. 3-1 North from Blair County Ballpark. Capacity crowd here tonight at Blair County Ballpark, and just a beautiful atmosphere. Got that uh, rain out of the way earlier on, and the weather has held off so far as we go to the top of the fourth inning. And we'll see some defensive changes now, and we'll get to that point of the ball game. We'll start seeing some more players shuffling in and out. We've got a new pitcher into the ball game, Kip Bachnight. We'll tell you more about him in a moment, but right now let's go back downstairs to Steve Degler. All right, J.D., thank you very much. You mentioned beautiful Blair County ballpark, seating capacity of just over 7,200. The place opened in 1999 with the two levels. You can't find a bad seat in this place, and if the seats are full, you can always head out to the bank and left field, bring your blanket, bring your chairs, and you can watch the game from a unique perspective. This is one of the best places to come for visiting teams and even for visiting broadcasters. Everybody loves coming to Altoona. It's a place that has drawn well since its inception in 1999 and the fans out in full force tonight watching a great all-star game guys back up to you all right thanks a lot Steve so we do have some changes as we mentioned for the Southern Division new pitcher Kip Bachnight and we have some other defensive changes new left fielder is Gary Burnham of the Reading Phillies and Brett Ronenberg a very versatile player for the Altoona curve moving from left field to first base so Staggies are racing right now <laughs> trying to make sure that he can get all his changes in there and these all-star games are a lot of fun trying to keep track of who's where and trying to make sure that uh, get everybody in the ball game we talked to Tim Leeper about that and he seemed pretty confident about his ability to get everybody in the ball game and that's what it's all about making sure that all these guys are rewarded with an opportunity to uh, showcase themselves and represent their major league organization and their club in the Eastern League. So Felix Molina will be the first man to face Kip Bachnight, right-hander of the Harrisburg Senators, and the ball hit deep in the hole at second. Look at the range that time by Ader Torres of the Akron Arrows. About five steps onto the outfield grass, makes the play going to his left and one away here in the fourth inning. Kip Bachnight, a right-hander, 27 years old, signed by the Nationals as a minor league free agent in February of 05. Originally selected by the Rockies in the 13th round back in 01 out of the University of South Carolina. Led the Carolina League with 14 wins for Salem in the Rocky system back in 02. Pitch is strike to Gabe Lopez of the Trenton Thunder. Lopez doubled as part of that three run second inning. Diminutive second baseman in the Yankees organization. He's only about 5'8 and 150 pounds, but. Really a scrappy player trying to scrap his way to the major league level. It's not easy in the Yankees organization, certainly. One of those organizations that doesn't necessarily always look to the minor leagues first, but Lopez, a guy that has made a nice minor league career so far in the New York organization. There's a called strike on Lopez. Bach Knight, a guy that Tim Leeper indicated to us, might be able to go more than an inning tonight, and he'll certainly need that with three pitchers unavailable to pitch tonight. Landon Jacobson of the curve, Gio Gonzalez of Redding, and Sean Smith of the Akron Arrows were unable to pitch. At least that's what we were told before the ball game. And this is a ball in the dirt, and the count now to two and two. Get a good look at Kip Bachnight wearing the red, white, and blue of the Harrisburg Senators, the Washington Nationals affiliate in the Eastern League. Big breaking ball, but a foul ball. It goes right over that first base dugout into the first row of seats. Senators play their games at Commerce Bank Stadium, which is on City Island right there in Harrisburg, a beautiful place to see a ball game. And it's a nice city, Harrisburg, to visit. And they're talking about uh, refurbishing that ballpark down there, too. 
Bachnick to the wind and a good tailing fastball, but hit just foul wide of the left field line. He really turned on that pitch. You can see the movement from Bachnick really running that in on the hands of Lopez, and he turned foul. And the count remains even, two and two. Nobody on one out. A three run top half of the second inning for the Northern Division. All of the damage done against Erie starter Nate Bumstead. Shane Newman of the Altoona Curve got the start. Very efficient. One, two, three in the top half of the first inning. Threw only 12 pitches before exiting the ball game, getting a chance to start in front of his hometown fans. The ball lifted foul and out of play. We talked about it in the open of the broadcast, Stige, but the Curve have had the starting pitcher in the Eastern League All-Star game three consecutive years. Shane Newman getting the nod tonight. Ian Snell in 2004. And Tom Gorzolani a year ago. And Gorzolani, a guy that we had a chance to see last year, really pitched well. Liner out to center field. Vic Butler barely has to move. Now comes in a step and puts it away, two away. Gorzolani finally getting his opportunity about a week or so before the Major League All-Star break to find his way into the Major League starting rotation for the Pirates. And the guy that we saw here last year making that move, it goes to show you, you could be in the Eastern League one year and you're firmly ready to go to the big leagues the next. And two away as Bonite tries to put together a 1-2-3 inning, much like Shane Newman did in the first inning. Denard Spann of the New Britain Rockcats. The ball outside. Of course, Minnesota has done a great job developing a lot of talent over the last really 10 years or so. The Twins have always been very competitive in that American League Central despite being a smaller market club. And the Twins draft and develop players very well. Denard Spann was a first round pick. Switch hitter. Takes another ball high, two and nothing. Tailing fastball, catching the outside corner. Bach Knight was voted into this All-Star game by the fans of Harrisburg. Each of the 12 Eastern League cities have the opportunity, and the fans of those cities have the opportunity to vote in one pitcher and one position player. A very unique fan balloting process in the Eastern League. And Kip Bach Knight was voted in by the Harrisburg Senators fans. Fan favorite and getting a chance to pitch here tonight in the Eastern League All-Star game. A 3-1. One fouled back and out of play. Denard Spann out of Tampa, Florida. They produced some pretty good players. And you think about Gary Sheffield and Dwight Gooden going back a long time. Fred McGriff is a guy out of that Tampa area. And Denard Spann, a very highly thought of prep player, and was drafted in the first round. Here comes the 3 2 pitch from Bach Knight. And that one misses high, ball four. I want to give you a look at who these players represent and what organizations they play for. And we talked about the Minnesota Twins and the New Britain Rockcats having an opportunity to have a partnership that they've had for a long time. As Tyler Mingus will get set to step in. And then you take a look at it. You've got the Mets, the Giants, the Twins, the Blue Jays, the Red Sox, and the Yankees in the Northern Division. Got a nice mix of big market and small market. When you have the two New York teams in Boston, then you have Minnesota and Toronto. And you had a good rivalry there between Portland and Trenton. It's the mini Red Sox-Yankees rivalry. Right. And those two teams are liable to meet in the playoffs again this year because they're the one-two teams in the Northern Division standings right now. Ball high on Tyler Mingus, a guy who was a double-A player a year ago in the Cardinals organization and played in the Texas League in a brand new ballpark out in Springfield. Ball, two balls in, no strikes. Take a look at the Southern Division teams and their affiliates. Righty on righty matchup here with a man at first base. Two outs here in the top of the fourth inning, the 3 1, and this one fouled back. All right, let's get a look at the Southern Division teams and who they are affiliated with. Of course, you'll see the Altoona curve there with the Pirates. They've been together since 1999. A lot of longtime partnerships among the Southern Division clubs and their major league affiliates. You don't see Akron and Cleveland leaving anytime soon. Of course, they're just up the road. Same situation with the curve and the Pirates, Bowie and Baltimore. And of course, the Reading Phillies and the Philadelphia Phillies have been together since 1967. Swing and a miss. Good fastball that time by Bach Knight. So two and two the count on Tyler Mingus, who is 0 for 1 officially, walked back in the second inning. Look at the sweat pouring off of Kip Bachnight. Very 
warm, humid night here at Blair County Ballpark. So far, so good weather-wise. Good lead off first base by Spann. He has 17 steals this year. He's running, swing and a miss, doesn't matter. A strikeout, and that'll end the Northern Division fourth inning. Now Kip Bachnight with a scoreless fourth inning. We'll see the Southern Division come up again in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Well, part of the great fun of the Eastern League All-Star Game, you get to have all the mascots here, and you see Steamer and Diesel Dog with the curb, and Sea Wolf from the Erie Sea Wolves, the talking mascot. He walks around the crowd and talks. <laughs> Very interesting mascot, but a lot of fun being had here in a huge crowd tonight at Blair County Ballpark. You see some of the fans enjoying themselves here as we get ready for the bottom half of the fourth inning. And another new pitcher into the ball game. So one inning for Matt Garza of the New Britain Rockcats, former first round pick of the Minnesota Twins. And he turns it over to left-hander Patrick Mish of the Connecticut Defenders, formerly known as the Norwich Navigators. And Mish was with the Navigators a year ago and they changed the name and the colors. New ownership up in Norwich, Connecticut. They play at Dodd Stadium. It's in the outskirts of Norwich and their owner, Lou DiBello, well-known boxing promoter, deciding that a marketing change was in order this year. And so they changed from the Norwich Navigators to the Connecticut Defenders. And Misha left-hander starting off Gary Burnham with a ball. And now Gary Burnham making his first plate appearance will take a strike. The Burnham comes in and bats in the spot that had been occupied by Simon Pond, the first baseman of the curb, who's out of the ball game. Burnham will tap one foul at the plate. And right now, let's go down to a guy who knows Gary Burnham pretty well, the voice of the Reading Phillies, Steve Degler. All right, you guys, thank you very much. And Irish Pat Coakley in charge of the Sports Turf Management Department here at Blair County Ballpark. Fancy name for the guy being the groundskeeper. The rain left just in time, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. It gave us a nice window. I expect to get most of this ball game in without any rain. Uh, there is some stuff coming, but I think we should be all right. What are some of the special things you did to the field to get ready for the All-Star game? Uh, a lot of the stuff we did was uh, really stuff that we do every year this time of year, but uh, we spruced it up a little, you know, put the logo behind home plate, which we normally don't do. And uh, my guys like to put the stars out there in the infield and just uh, tried to get a little more detailed with the patterns. Any, like that. How, how different are the going patterns for you? Uh, it was quite a bit different. The one on the infield, putting the star in, that took uh, quite a bit of time. And, you know, other than that, uh, the outfield, uh, Took a little bit longer, but, um, you know, it's the All-Star game, so we came up with something special. Right. Good job. Thanks a lot, Iris. Let's go back upstairs to you guys. Hey, Deggs, so uh, Gary Burnham just flied out. He's a veteran player, 31 years old. He, he's a guy who's helped the Reading Phillies uh, this year, isn't he? Well, he's not there now. We'll ask him about that later. J.D.? He did fly out. And here's Corey Kaler of the Bowie Bay Sox fa uh, facing Left-handed pitcher Patrick Mish, the third used tonight by Todd Klaus, the manager of the Portland Sea Dogs, following Chris Smith and Matt Garza. Ball low, and now here's another one outside. Two balls and no strikes. Guys like Gary Burnham, you see a lot of them at the double-A AA and triple-A level. He's been around a long time. He's been in professional baseball for 10 years, and they're very important to the makeup of clubs at the double-A and triple-A levels as Mish fields this one and will just decide to take it himself right to the bag. Two away here in the fourth inning, but... Steige, as you know, you can't win in double-A AA or triple-A, especially double-A, without veteran-type players, and we're seeing it with the Altoona Curve this year and a couple of all-star players, Simon Pond and Brett Ronenberg, players that maybe have a long shot at getting back to the major leagues, but you have to have guys like that to win at this level. It's true, and yet, you know, the Akron Arrows that won the championship last year were largely made up of young players. That was one of the most amazing things right. about the era of success last year was they really weren't a team with uh, veteran players in their lineup. And they were all good young prospects who had won a championship at the Class A level the year before and came right up and won one uh, at the double-A level. So they're kind of an exception to the rule. Carlos Leon of the Reading Phillies will take one upstairs. So he turns around and bats right-handed. He batted left-handed his first time up when he singled. That was against Chris Smith, the right-handed pitcher of the Sea Dogs. Now batting right-handed against the lefty Mish, and there's a ball downstairs. Mish is one of these guys I guess you'd probably characterize as a crafty lefty. Kind of goes out and tries to lull you to sleep. Get a good look at him in those navy blue uniforms of the Connecticut defenders. Ball high, so he walks Leone. 
Again, one of the top on-base men in the Eastern League. Came in with a 401 on-base percentage, and he's been on base twice tonight. So a two-out base runner for the Southern Division. Back to the top of the order, and Ader Torres will also turn around, and he'll bat right-handed for the first time. Torres singled and scored the only run for the Southern Division. They led it one to nothing, but then a three-run second inning, aided by four walks by Erie right-hander Nate Bumstead, leading to that three-run top half of the second inning and a three-to-one lead. Left-hander Mish delivers a pitch that's popped up, and this should end the inning. We'll see who wants it. First baseman Abreu makes the call and the catch. And the Southern Division with nothing in the bottom half of the fourth inning. We'll go to the fifth, 3-1 North. The 2006 Eastern League All-Star Game on FSN Pittsburgh is presented by UPMC Health Plan, where you belong. By Quaker Steak and Lube, voted Best Wings USA. And by the Allegheny Mountains Convention and Visitors Bureau, welcome to the heart of the beautiful Alleghenies. Here are all the folks on the hillside enjoying the ball game while they relax on their blankets. This ballpark located right off I-99 and just a beautiful place. When you can drive by, it's just inviting. You almost want to say, hey, I hope there's a game there tonight. Let's go in because it just has that look to it when you drive by. Adam Lind leads it off here in the fifth inning. Designated hitter is 0 for 2. Struck out swinging and bounced to first. Left-handed batter, one of the top hitters in the Eastern League. Here's the 0-1 delivery. Fouled away down the left field line into the crowd. Lind was on with J.D. on a, on a post-game show that we do here in the ballpark live. And he's a man of few words, kind of a quiet guy, isn't he, J.D.? Yeah, he really is, but you know what? He, uh, he doesn't need to be a... Uh, a guy that has a lot of opinions because he'll just let his bat do the talking. He's already done that this year. A guy that has a chance will keep an eye on it to maybe make a run at a triple crown in this league. And we know how rare that is. And, uh, you know, you look at Adam Lind, he comes in tied for the league lead in home runs and RBIs, leads the league in RBIs, third in hitting. So obviously an opportunity for him to put up a very special season, which he's already done. That's, that's two strikeouts tonight for Lind. One away here in the fifth. Now let's take a look at uh, the Major League All-Stars who actually came through the Eastern League. And just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here. And it's amazing. And the, you know, the one name that stands out to me right away is Ryan Howard, who won the home run derby and is uh, the new slugger on the scene now in the National League and was with the Reading Phillies just a couple of years ago. It's amazing, really. Uh, this league has really produced a lot of great players, J.D., and I know you've been with this Altoona club since 99, so you've seen a lot of them in person. Yeah, David Wright, you see down at the bottom. Binghamton met in 2004. Great to see in the home run derby in Pittsburgh. With Ryan Howard and David Wright blasting balls out of PNC Park. Two guys that played in this league only two years ago. And this list that we see is only since 2003. There were actually 26 players that played in the Eastern League that were Major League All-Stars in that game at PNC Park. Michelle Abreu pops a 1-1 pitch up to the second baseman, Ader Torres, two down. Northern Division All-Stars continue to lead this game three to one. They put three runs on the board in the second inning off of Erie starter Nate Bumstead. He really struggled to the point where manager Tim Leeper of the Southern Division All-Stars had to go get him. Bronson Sardinia has walked twice in this ball game. Kip Bucknight on the mound for his second inning of work. And the wind up on the pitch to Sardinia. Breaking ball fouled away. Buck Knight, one out away from a really nice appearance here tonight in the Eastern League All-Star game. Scoreless fourth inning, walked one, has gotten the first two men out here in the fifth inning. And good to see a guy like Buck Knight, who's put up numbers this year that you might not think are All-Star type numbers, but has had a very good outing here tonight. There are a lot of guys who were ticketed to be in the All-Star game and for various reasons could not be here either injuries or promotions. Here's a one one pitch Sardinia comes up empty one and two. And I think the name that stands out in my mind uh, among those players is Mike Pelfrey who just recently was promoted from Binghamton to the Mets and uh, got his first major league start recently and got his first major league win first round pick of the Mets who 
was supposed to be in this game but was recently promoted. Here's the one two pitch upstairs two and two. Well there were actually two Binghamton players who were promoted to the big leagues at the same time. Pelpery was the big name in New York and that had everybody excited. Another guy who actually was a pirate farmhand at one time Henry Owens went up and hard throwing right handed relief pitcher now pitching in the major leagues with the New York Mets. So we had a chance to see a couple of really highly thought of players in the Mets organization. None bigger though than Pelfrey. He was probably one of the bigger prospects that we've seen come through this Eastern League and well he looked the part. Mid 90s fastball came out in a game against the Altoona Curve earlier this year. Steige his first pitch of the first inning 94 miles an hour. That's special. You can come out and throw that hard right off the bat before you're even stretched out in the ball game. Bach Knights 2 2 delivery to Sardinia misses inside 3 and 2. Three runs on three hits for the North. One run five hits for the South. Trenton Thunder play their games at a place called Waterfront Park a beautiful stadium right up there in Trenton New Jersey. Got the golden retriever that goes out and retrieves bats chase that golden thunder he's called a dog that is actually employed by the Trenton Thunder and he'll go out in the first inning and grab the bat and bring it back in his mouth to the dugout. Just a really neat scene out at Waterfront Park. Buck Knight stops in mid motion and the full count on Bronson Sardinia. 23 years old. Supplemental first round pick in 01 by the New York Yankees. He's got a couple of brothers also playing professionally so very interesting you have three Sardinia brothers playing professional baseball. It's three to one North. And the South coming to bat. How about the bucket race uh, it's one of many things that you can uh, enjoy during the uh, inning breaks here at Blair County Ballpark. We see the new pitcher now New Hampshire's Michael McDonald on the mound. There's the bucket race. A night like this you might think all the water might just evaporate right out of that thing. huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the great between inning contests that fans just absolutely love and what's so unique about minor league baseball you get a chance to not only enjoy baseball but come out and have a few laughs as well. Vic Butler is 0 for 2 he leads off here in the fifth inning for the Southern Division All Stars trailing 3 to 1 here on their home field if you will. In the Blair County ballpark. Michael McDonald a right hander on delivers to Butler and it's a strike call in the inside corner. Well McDonald a guy that is actually from Maine you don't see too many Professional players out of the state of Maine 15th round pick of the Blue Jays in 2004 soft liner on one hop actually to the first baseman who's the new first baseman Tyler Von Schell of the Connecticut defenders takes the play himself. And one down here in the fifth. McDonald a right hander one of two New Hampshire pitchers in this ball game, two starting pitchers Ishmael Ramirez who we understand will not pitch tonight. But uh, McDonald. We've only allowed one run or fewer in six of seven starts to open up the season. So he's a very good looking pitcher in the Blue Jays organization. And does a nice job here getting Brett Ronenberg to bounce out to Gabe Lopez. And quickly two down here in the fifth inning for the Southern Division All Stars. And their designated hitter, who's 0 for 2, Kevin Kuzminoff, will stand in. Kuzminov struck out looking in the first and lined out to the third baseman in the third inning. There's a strike 0 and 1. McDonald is the new pitcher. Pusher is in to play third base. We have a new third baseman also. Brian Busher of Connecticut is at third. One ball and one strike. So a new first baseman, Tyler Von Schell. Brian Busher now at third base. And the pitcher, McDonald. And the 1 1 delivery, and there's a hit by Kevin Kuzminoff. Center fielder Denard Span will cut it off, and a base hit for Kuzminoff. That's the sixth hit of the ball game for the Southern Division team, and it brings up Corey Casto. Well, if you're looking to plan something special for your family, friends, co workers, youth group, sports team, or other group, be sure to call the Altoona Curves Group Sales Department toll free at 877 99 Curve. Groups of 25 or more qualify for discounts on tickets, 
plus other benefits. Picnic, birthday, and youth team packages are also available. Plan your next group outing with the Curve. Call the group sales department, 877-99-CURVE. Another unassisted put out for Tyler Von Schell in an outstanding inning for McDonald. And the Southern team still trails 3-1 to one after 5. Well, we got some more changes. We got more changes and then changes upon changes. We got Cody Kirkland over at third now. Noah Hall in center. Melvin Dorda at second. And Kip Bachnight is still on the mound, though. Well, Tim Leeper needed this because he short three pitchers that he wasn't able to use. He had to bring Nate Bumstead out of the ball game after two thirds of an inning. So this is very important for Kip Bachnight to be able to go into this third inning and really help out Tim Leeper and Ray Searage and everybody making the decision in that Southern Division dugout. Brian Busher, the new third baseman for the Northern Division All-Stars, leads it off here. We're in the top of the sixth inning, and the Northern Division team leads 3-1. to one. Busher hitting 278 this year with four home runs and 26 runs batted in. Kim Bucknight, Kip Bucknight delivers, and the ball fouled away to the left side. No balls and one strike on Brian Busher. Busher, a third round pick in 03 of the San Francisco Giants. Member of the Connecticut Defenders team. Leading uh, fielding percentage guy, by the way, in the Eastern League as well. Real good glove. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swung on and missed. 1 and 2. Hit Bach Knight. Making a name for himself in this ball game. Nice to see a veteran pitcher coming in and doing a good job. Busher, a former University of South Carolina ball player. Helped the game Cox to the 2003 College World Series. And he won the Southeastern Conference batting title with a 393 average at that time. Here's the 1 2 delivery. Upstairs, 2 and 2. It's become a factory, University of South Carolina. We see their players all over the minor leagues. Really good college baseball program that's been to several College World Series over the last five or six years. Very good reliever in the Pirates organization playing for the Altoona Curve. Chris Hernandez, a guy that Pirate fans should remember the name of. Very good reliever for the Curve this year. Pusher drives one up the middle for a base hit. Let's go down to Steve Degler, who's with the starting pitcher of the Northern Division All-Stars, Chris Smith. Degs? All right, guys, thank you very much. Chris, what was that like getting the honor to start in the All-Star game? Uh, it was a special thing. Uh, I didn't know I was getting to start until about a day and a half ago, and then uh, manager Todd Klaus told me I was getting to start, and that, that means a lot, and I was happy to start the game here today. This is your first full season since coming off of shoulder surgery. How was the rehab for you? Oh, it was, br it was brutal, to tell you the truth. It was uh, every day, seven days a week, hard. Uh, and I'm glad, it, you know, I, I took the grind and, and gave everything I had to get my shoulder better. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have, you know, a pretty healthy arm right now. You pitch in what is considered one of the band boxes in the league at Hadlock Field in Portland, Maine. What's it like pitching here in the graveyard at Blair County Ballpark? It's, uh, we played here a couple times before the season. And, and today, like I said, you just keep the ball low. But uh, in, in Maine, and you, any ball can be out in any time. And it feels nice to pitch here and have the comfortability of throwing the ball wherever you want. When you look at the rest of the season as we head to the second half, any personal goals for you? <laughs> finish the season and uh, finish it strong. Good job out there tonight. Congratulations. Best of luck. Thank you very much. With Chris Smith of the Sea Dogs, let's go back upstairs to you guys. Thanks, Degs. Chris Smith turned in a nice performance tonight. And this is one of those uh, situations where, you know, pitchers will think back on these moments in, the, in a bit of a spotlight. And I think it's interesting to hear him talk about Blair County Ballpark as a place where you can be a little more comfortable and not worry about the ball flying out of here. But Curve actually have been a good home run hitting team in this park. And J.D., a 3-0 and count, by the way, on Curtis Thigpen, the right-handed batting catcher. And I think um, I've been hearing players say over the last couple of years that actually the ball's flying out of here more than it used to. Yeah, this used to be a ballpark that, as Steve mentioned, was a graveyard. But we have seen some more home runs hit really over the last three or four years. And it really almost started with the addition of those new left field bleachers you see in the left corner of your screen, the UPMC home run junction, as they're called here. And Really, ever since those came in, we've seen balls start to fly out, but not just out there, really out to right center field or not. So we might have to get one of those uh, you know, astrophysicists in here or something to try and figure out why the ball's flying out of here so much lately. But Steve's right. This is still considered a pitcher's ballpark and one that I know uh, a lot of things go into that, one of those being just a great mound to pitch off of, one of the things you hear a lot about from pitchers around the league. 
Well, it's a 3 2 count on Curtis Thigpen. And actually, you talk about the great mound, but they talk about the great infield here. The, you know, the, the overall feel of this ballpark is really one that's almost of major league caliber. You saw Irish Coakley on earlier, the head of the grounds crew here at Blair County Ballpark, and he's responsible for that. But the guys just love playing on this surface. Brian Busher back safely. Curtis Thigpen is 0 for 2. A run came home when he bounced into a 6-4-3 double play in the second. Not credited with an RBI. A three-run second inning for the Northern Division All-Stars. Ball hit well to left center field, and the left fielder Gary Burnham drifting underneath. One away here in the sixth inning. And it'll bring up Felix Molina, the shortstop, who's one for two. But you know, getting back to the home runs hit in this ballpark, it also helps when you had guys like uh, Ryan Howard in the league blasting home runs here. He had, in fact, his franchise record tying and the uh, franchise record setting home run for the Reading Phillies in this ballpark in 2004. And then later that summer, a guy named Brad Eldred came to Blair County Ballpark and absolutely put on a show, not only the end of 2004, but the first month of 2005. And hopefully Brad Eldred can get back and into the lineup and help out the Pirates next year. Unfortunately, not able to play this year because of injury. Felix Molina takes a strike. No balls in one strike. One away here in the sixth. Kip Bachnight on for his third inning and breaking ball swung on and foul tipped. No balls and two strikes. Brian Busher's base hit, the fourth hit of the ball game. That's all they have. Three runs on four hits. Nate Bumstead got into trouble, could not find the strike zone. He walked four batters in that second inning, contributing to that three run inning. Bach Knight and a head on the count and a pitch outside one ball and two strikes. Molina out of Puerto Rico he was drafted in the 21st round and players that grow up in Puerto Rico are subject to the major league draft but those from Venezuela and the Dominican Republic and elsewhere anywhere outside of the US Canada and Puerto Rico can be signed as international free agents so a little lesson on how the major league draft works that even though grew up in Puerto Rico because it is a territory of the United States those players are subject to the draft and certainly a very highly scouted area. He's from Mayaguez Puerto Rico. Another breaking ball outside three and two. Kind of see those last couple of pitches Bach Knight is left up in the zone and you got to figure he's been out there three innings a warm night like this he's really got to have a lot of sweat on his hands. You can see he just wasn't able to snap that ball over it. It stayed high. Just a gentle breeze blowing right now down towards left center field here. Full count on Molina. This is Melvin Dorda on to Carlos Leon and a nice play at first by Brett Ronenberg and they get two. It is still three to one Northern Division All Stars. We're in the middle of the sixth. Well, there you see as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, the North still lead three to one. South with six hits, but only one run across so far. They've stranded six. We have another pitcher now, left-hander from the Trenton Thunder, Charlie Manning. 6'2", 180 pounder, left-hander, 27 years old out of Winter Haven, Florida, University of Tampa. Has 53 strikeouts in 51 in the third innings over his 27 appearances. He's holding Eastern League hitters to 206 average. Charlie Manning. This is his second stint with the Yankees. He was originally drafted by the Yankees in the ninth round in 01 out of the University of Tampa. Was traded from the Yankees to Cincinnati with Brandon Clausen in exchange for Aaron Boone back in July of 03. But Charlie Manning against leading off the bottom of the sixth inning for the Southern Division. Catcher, number 26, Sullivan Manriquez. Sullivan Manriquez replaces Mike Rabello behind the plate. So it's Solomon Manriquez standing in here. 
Manrique is one of these guys, Stoggy, doing some double duty. He played in the All-Star Futures game in Pittsburgh on Sunday. And a few days later, here he is in the double-A All-Star game, the Eastern League All-Star game. Harrisburg Senator. And the first pitch to him is a ball. One ball and no strikes from Charlie Manning to Solomon Manriquez. One pitch down low. 2 0 on Manriquez. Manriquez out of Guacara, Venezuela. And he's the number 26 ranked prospect in the Nationals organization going into this season. Swing and a miss. Played for the world team in the Major League Baseball Futures game on Sunday in Pittsburgh. So he had an opportunity to visit PNC Park and participate in the all-star festivities there in Pittsburgh. Here's the 2 1 pitch to him and a strike call 2 and 2. Southern Division trying to get something going here. Gary Burnham would be next, and then Corey Kaler. Burnham on deck. And Manning's 2 2 delivery to Manriquez is going to get out behind second base. Gabe Lopez. Can he get him? He does. What a play by Gabe Lopez. Lopez, a leaping throw. And that's the kind of stuff we saw him do a lot of last year in Trenton, and he continues to do it. That's why he's one of the top fielding second basemen in the Eastern League. What a play. Think about how hard it is to get anything behind a throw when all of your momentum is going the other way. And he did a great job getting a lot on that throw. Enrique has a catcher, so he's not going to run all that well. So Lopez is able to get it. Just a beauty. Now Gary Burnham pops one up. Thigpen comes back towards the screen. It'll drop out of play. No balls and one strike on Gary Burnham, the 31 year old outfielder of the Reading Phillies. Steve Degler is standing by with Shane Human. We'll get to him in a moment. No balls and one strike on Burnham. Here's the pitch. Outside, one and one. Is Degs ready now? And let's go down there to Steve Degler with Shane Human. Degs? All right, Stoggy, thank you very much. We talked to one starting pitch. Let's talk to the one for the Southern Division. How much fun did you have out there as the starter? Oh, it was real fun, man. I had a, you know, a few butterflies going, had some adrenaline going, you know. So all day, uh, you know, pitching an awesome game started out. You know, that was real fun for me, especially getting in there and getting out like I, like I did. You know, I wasn't expecting that. How much fun was it to do it in your own ballpark? Real fun. No travel. That's the key, man. You know, in front of your fans here. It's a packed house, you know, so. That was a little extra extra uh, added to it. You're leading the Eastern League in ERA at the break. What has been the difference for you this year, if anything? I guess uh, the whole mental part of the game, you know, just having that, that good mindset, going out there and wanting to be aggressive, throw strikes, you know, take one pitch at a time, one bat at a time. Congratulations on a great season thus far. Best of luck the rest of the way. I appreciate it. Thank you. Shane Newman, let's go back upstairs to you guys. Thanks, Dag. Shane Newman, one of the real nice people uh, in this Curve organization out of New Iberia, Louisiana. Played at LSU. Once uh, pitched in front of 23,000 folks on the way to the College World Series championship. Ball gets away from the catcher Thigpen. Back to the screen. Gary Burnham at the plate. Two balls and two strikes. So he pitched uh, in front of a big crowds and he's had a little bit of experience in, in huge games and last year pitched well down the stretch. Got a chance to pitch in the playoffs and, and hopes to get another opportunity again this year in addition to what he did tonight. Well, he's definitely a guy you need to keep an eye on if you're a Pirate fan. Of course, uh, Shane Newman, not a guy highly regarded in terms of being a prospect coming up through the organization. But over the last couple of years, last year you mentioned Steige getting that opportunity to start is really the main reason why the curve got into the Eastern League playoffs a year ago, going 4-0 and in five late season starts. Harry Burnham hits one the opposite way. It's a fair ball. Burnham on his way to second. Jorge Padilla, the left fielder, slipped out there on the... Uh, Dirt near the uh, bullpen down the left field line. Hopefully he's okay. As he went to throw the ball, burn him into second base with a double. Getting back to Human though, uh, Steige, he's not going to be a starting pitcher, you wouldn't think, in the major leagues. Take a look at this replay here, and he's dropping it down the left field line. 
See what happens to Padilla down here. Of course, the one thing you always want to be careful about, and we've had some rain, is uh, making sure that these guys are able to stay healthy and not one of them. Look like he just kind of got caught up on that mat that they have down the left field line where the catchers are, and where they have the plates down in the bullpen area. And fortunately, he's okay and up and throwing. But getting back to Human, probably a guy that you could see in a situational situation, I guess it would be the right way to put it in the major leagues. Probably a middle reliever and got a very good chance to uh, have an opportunity to get up to Pittsburgh within the next year or two. I think it's interesting, though, that he's gone from being in the bullpen to being a starter in each of the last two years and has made that transition really beautifully for the curve. So it makes you wonder if he couldn't be a starter. No balls and one strike on Corey Kaler. Burnham at second. Pitch up and in. Got away from Thigpen. He finds it, but not before Burnham moves over to third. So the wild pitch from Charlie Manning. It's only a 3-1 ball game. You got to think of that's one of those situations where because you have two guys that aren't used to working together, Charlie Manning and Trenton and Curtis Thigpen wow. in New Hampshire, that maybe he thought he was going to throw some other kind of a pitch because it looked like Thigpen reacted a bit late. Yes, the ball was up in the zone, but it looked like he was expecting something else. And that's uh, something that commonly will happen in all-star games. Corey Kaler ready now for the 1-1, and there's a base hit in the right center field. Denard Spann will cut it off. Burnham comes home, and it's now a 3-2 ball game. An RBI single for Bowie's Corey Kaler. That will make the fans happy down there in Bowie, Maryland. Take a look, Steige, at this pitch here. Lefty on lefty, a breaking ball. He left it up, and uh, Kaler pouncing on that ball. That's the one thing, you know, even at the double-A level, Usually when these guys get here, they're able to hit mistakes. And clearly, Kaler hit a mistake that time for Manning. He left it up in the zone and getting the Southern Division back within a run. Here's the 1-1 delivery. And that's not right. That's the first pitch to Carlos Leon. I'm just going by the scoreboard there. No balls and well, that's a ball. One ball and no strikes on Carlos Leon, the shortstop, who singled in the second and drew a walk in the fourth. Corey Kaler being held at first by the first baseman Tyler Von Schell and this is going to be caught by Von Schell and foul ground. And that's the second out of the sixth inning. And up to the top of the order to second baseman Ader Torres. Or Melvin Dorda I beg your pardon as he was replaced Ader Torres. Melvin Dorda of the Harrisburg Senators is the batter. Dorda, like his teammate Kip Bachnight, was voted into the All-Star game by the fans of the Harrisburg Senators. A really neat thing that the league allows each team to do and the fans of each team to do to have the opportunity to vote in a position player and a pitcher. And Dorda lines one in the right field for a base hit. Going the opposite way on Charlie Manning. Dorda, a 295 hitter for the Senators this year. Reaches here in his first at bat in the sixth inning. Nine hits now for the Southern Division All-Stars, and Vic Butler comes to the plate. No, he's not going to come either. we got to remember we have some replacements in this game now. <laughs> I'm looking at my – you can't erase all these names everywhere, J.D. They come fast and furious. Noah Hall is the batter in place of Vic Butler. Hall's a guy that knows the Eastern League very well. He's been around for a while. Came up through the Expos organization, had a very good year a couple of years ago with the Harrisburg Senators, and now his second different club in this league with the Bowie Bay Sox, and putting together a pretty good year. He had, he had to spend last year at Class A in the White Sox organization, despite the year before that being at AAA. So, you know, he's happy to be back up here playing at the AA level and playing in the Orioles organization down in Bowie, Maryland. Two down. And that's a foul ball down the right side. Well, Noah Hall with a chance to tie the game up here. Corey Kaler's at second. Melvin Dorda's at first. Actually, the, if you look at the Northern Division team, they're more represented among the leaders in the uh, in batting in the Eastern League this year. The top three hitters in the Eastern League are in this game, but. Eight of the top ten are in this game, and five of those eight are from the Northern Division. 
Southern Division trying to put some runs on the board here in the one one pitch outside two and one. Charlie Manning working from the stretch and the two one pitch on the way to Noah Hall and he takes it inside three and one. Brett Ronenberg of the curve is on deck and he will bat if uh, Hall is able to get on here. There's the pitch and it's ball four and they're loaded up. Corey Kaler over to third. Melvin Dorda to second. Noah Hall to first. Brett Ronenberg with an RBI single in the first is two for three. A couple of singles. And Todd Kloss, the manager of the Northern Division All Stars, runs out to the mound to have a word with Charlie Manning. That's unusual. Normally in, in Eastern League games, it's always the pitching coach who comes out first. <laughs> Now Brett Ronenberg, a clutch hitter for the curve. See what he can do with two outs here. Southern Division team down by a run. Ronenberg swings and misses 0 and 1 on Charlie Manning. Now a great opportunity here for Ronenberg to give the Southern Division the lead in front of his home fans here. He's had a good night so far, two for three, including that RBI back in the first inning. Ronenberg hits one to right field in front of right fielder Bronson Sardinia. Corey Kaler comes home. Melvin Dort is going to score. And now we've got runners at first and third, and we have a lead for the Southern Division All-Stars. They lead it four to three. And Brett Ronenberg has driven in three of the four runs here tonight. And we talked earlier about how hometown guys have a knack of coming up large for their teams in the All-Star game, and certainly Ronenberg has done just that. Well, Ronenberg facing the left-hander Manning again. Manning for the second time that we've looked at. Corey Kaler earlier in the inning, he left the breaking ball up over the plate, and that time Ronenberg, again, a veteran player. He's been around for a long time. Came up through the Marlins organization and is actually in his second stint with the Altoona curve, and he's a guy that can hit mistakes, and he certainly did that to give the Southern Division the lead here. Now Kevin Kuzminoff. Stands in and Kuzminoff singled his last time up in the fifth inning. He's one for three. A 400 hitter for the Akron Arrows with runners at first and third. Ronenberg at first. Noah Hall at third. Here's the 1-0. Kuzminoff hits it a long way. Jorge Padilla will haul it in though right there. I thought it was going to carry a little bit more than that and the inning is over. But the Southern Division have taken the lead. They lead at four to three after six. Long way to go. There's Sea Wolf, the Erie Sea Wolves, <laughs> and Bear Bay. So we have a wolf and a bear. Bear Bay is on the mound now. The Akron Arrows pitcher comes in here, and now he's got himself a little lead. 4-3 Southern Division All Stars leading after putting three runs on the board. And Brett Ronenberg has been a hero so far. The curve left fielder has three singles and three RBIs on the night. And as we head now to the seventh inning, I think we're going to turn it over to Jason Dombach. JD. All right. Thanks a lot, Staggy. You had a look at Bear Bay, Ronald Bear Bay. And you think of a guy named Bear, you're probably thinking, all right, he's probably, what, about 6'3 and 235 or 40 pounds? No. Bear Bay, 6'3, 160. And he's known as Bear because his grandfather just started calling him Bear when he was a young kid, and that name is kind of stuck. So instead of Ronald Bay, it's Bear Bay. And he's of the Akron Arrows coming on as the fifth pitcher for the Southern Division. Big tip of the cap to Kip Bucknight of the Harrisburg Senators with three scoreless innings. Came into a three to one ball game, did not allow any runs in three innings in the Southern Division with that big three run bottom half of the sixth inning. Now leading at four to three and Bear Bay, a big right hander. Takes a ball outside. Two balls and no strikes on Gabe Lopez who leads things off the Trenton Thunder second baseman who made just a magnificent play defensively to open up that bottom half of the six but Southern Division able to get some men on and score those three runs highlighted by that two run hit by Brett Ronenberg an early MVP candidate you got to think certainly with those three hits and three runs batted in and of course he's the hometown guy as well so he'll get the vote you would think from the hometown media 3-0 pitch 
And that's high, and so a four-pitch walk issued by Bear Bay to Gabe Lopez. The leadoff man is aboard. Lopez is on for the second time. He doubled back in the sixth, uh, second inning, rather. And we'll go back to the top of the order, and Denard Spann, who started the game for the Northern Division in center field, he's still in there. He's been on base twice. He walked one of four walks issued by Erie pitcher Nate Bumstead in the second inning. And Bumstead was the pitcher of record until Brett Ronenberg gave the Southern Division the lead in the sixth inning. Foul ball right back to the net by Denard Spann. One of three first-round picks of the Minnesota Twins playing in this All-Star game representing the New Britain Rockcats. And when they head back to New Britain, they actually have four former Minnesota Twins first-round picks on one club. Matt Moses, an outfielder, not an all-star, but one of the four Minnesota Twins first-round picks. There's a ball low, so it's one ball and one strike on Denard Spann. Came in hitting 278, only one home run. One of those prototypical leadoff guys, and he's done his job tonight getting on base twice by way of walk. Now the 1-1 pitch, and that one will miss outside. Well, Steve Degler is standing by with one of the celebrities who participated in the home run derby here. Degs? Stoggy, thank you very much. With NBA player Kenny Anderson, what was it like going out there getting some hacks before the game? Well, I was excited. You know, that was, um, I haven't played baseball since I was 15. So that was about 20 years ago. So, you know, it was, it was exciting for me. How did you guys lose to a pitcher, though? Tyler Green, a pitcher, goes out and beats you guys. Yeah, I don't know. These guys, he, he, can, he can hit. So these guys, you know what I mean? So, you know, he used to the game. So, Are, Have you been a baseball fan? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely a, a baseball fan. Um, I really wanted to play it when I was a kid, but I wasn't a good hitter. You know, I was scared of the batter's box. So I couldn't, you know, I was scared I was going to get hit with the ball. You get a, a chance to spend some time in a minor league ballpark tonight. Yeah. What's that experience like? Oh, this, this is great, man. This is a great setup they're doing down here. Uh, the minor league all-star game. Um, uh, our tuna curves. This, they got great facilities. You're trying to squeeze one more year out in your NBA career. Maybe one or two. Yeah. What are the prospects right now? I don't know. And no, no prospects. I just work. You know, I have control of that. Just work out, stay in shape. And whatever happens, happens. You know, um, I played for 14. I've been blessed to play for 14 years. No major injuries, and uh, you know I'm, I think I'm in decent shape. Where you know if a team you know want to come and look at me, you know they 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 they'll say the same. So you know, I'm just waiting. I'm glad you took some time out here tonight, had some fun, and then good luck yeah. with your NBA career the rest of the way. All right, thank you. With Kenny Anderson, let's go back upstairs. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. Jorge Padilla of the Binghamton Mets batting for the first time tonight lifts one into shallow right field where the catch is made. So that'll keep Lopez at second and Span at first. Now one out here in the seventh inning. And Adam Lind was due to bat, and we will see a pinch hitter here. It is Jeremy West of the Portland Sea Dogs. So Adam Lind, one of the top players in the Eastern League, but an 0 for 3 night with two strikeouts. But don't let that fool you. Lind clearly one of the top two or three players in this entire Eastern League, and a guy that has a chance, as we mentioned earlier, maybe to make a run at a triple crown. But Jeremy West will take one upstairs. One and nothing. We just got the attendance here for tonight's 2006 UPMC Health Plan Eastern League All-Star Game. A new record for Blair County Ballpark. Just over 9,300 fans here tonight. 9,308. Well, look at that. That's a pretty picture. That is isn't it? awesome. Packing them in here tonight at BCB. A new franchise record, 9,308. Change up, it looked like, and an appeal down to first base. And West takes a ball, two and one. Jeremy West hitting over 300, 301. Eight homers and 41 runs batted in for the Portland Sea Dogs. Sea Dogs certainly well represented with four Eastern League All Stars. Ground ball to short, could be two. Leon, Dorda, but they don't get the double play, is beating it out. He's Jeremy West. So that'll send the runner to third as Lopez crosses over. Span out at second. And West safe at first on the fielder's choice. And we'll get our first look at the plate at Tyler Von Schell of the Connecticut Defenders. Boy, nearly a great double play turn that time by Leon, who's made some very nice plays defensively tonight. And that time working with Melvin Dorda of the Harrisburg Senators, nearly able to turn a terrific double play. They've turned two tonight already. The runners at the corners. Again, it's a one-run game. And there's a ball, 1-0. Let's take a look at this double play, Staggy. Now Dorda 
Didn't get rid of the ball quite as quickly as we saw Ader Torres doing it earlier in the ball game. And as a result, Jeremy West able to get there ahead of the throw. <laughs> the footwork that these guys have around the bag at this level is really remarkable. And that time you saw Dorda able to make the turn, get the ball out of his glove and throw strongly onto first. And Dorda's a guy that plays a lot of different positions. He's just not a second baseman. A swing and a miss that time by Von Schell. And it's 0-2. Dorda has appeared at four different positions this year for the Harrisburg Senators. Bay trying to get out of it here, and there's a ball high. Tying run is at third base here in the seventh inning. Look at Bear Bay of the Cleveland Indians organization playing for the Akron Arrows. He was originally drafted by the Chicago Cubs. Now the 1-2. Ground ball to third. Cody Kirkland of Erie will throw on to Dorda at second base, and they get out of the inning as we will get ready to stretch out here at Blair County Ballpark. Seventh inning stretch time. South with a 4-3 lead. Well, a new crowd, greatest crowd ever here at Blair County Ballpark. 9,308, and they're stretching out here. Seventh inning stretch time at Blair County Ballpark. The Southern Division, of which the hometown Altoona Curb are part of, with the 4-3 lead. Brett Ronenberg, the hero so far tonight. Three for four, and he has knocked in three runs. Just a great night for Ronenberg. Great night here at Blair County Ballpark as the stars of the Eastern League are here, and you see the crowd. Not much uh, empty seats all around the ballpark tonight as we get a look at the sixth pitcher of the night for the Northern Division, left-hander Glenn Perkins, a former first-round pick of the Minnesota Twins. Perkins was taken in the first round 22nd overall back in 2004 by the Twins out of the University of Minnesota. And he's a native of Minnesota, Stillwater, Minnesota, so he's a hometown kid up there trying to make it all the way back home to pitch for the Twins. 2-10 and ten record, though, this year. Swing and a miss, certainly among the league leaders in losses, and he was voted in by New Britain fans into this All-Star game. Left-hander facing Cody Kirkland, our first look at him, and he strikes out swinging on three pitches. One away, and let's set it down where we've got Steve Degler standing by with the early favorite for the MVP tonight, I'd say, Steve. I would say you are absolutely correct. Brett Ronenberg of the hometown Altoona Curve, couple big hits. How you feeling out there tonight? Not bad at all, man, considering the start. It was like we weren't sure if we were going to play with the rain coming, so definitely feeling good right now. Being a, a, an all-star in your hometown, what's that been like for here in Altoona? I think that's the best thing about being an all-star in general. I mean, sometimes the travel is hard on you, but uh, when you're at home in your home crowd and you get cheered loudly whenever you go to bat, it's it's a good feeling. Speaking of the travel, coming from Australia to play in the States, what's that experience been like for you? Uh, early on, it was really tough. I mean, I was away and I was in extended in rookie ball for <laughs> two years, and it wasn't real f much fun baseball, but it's sort of paying off now, and things are starting to flow for me, and I'm really, really enjoying my game. What's it like to compete against these guys all season long, and then for one night, your teammates? It's awesome being teammates because you hang out, you talk a little bit during the games and maybe afterwards in the, in the parking lot, but uh, it's good to sit in the same dugout as some of these guys. They're great players. As the game wears on, is it important to win it? It's fun to win, man. You know what? You don't come out to lose and having a good feeling and they hit that like I, did, I was pretty happy. Is there another knocking that bat the rest of the night? Well, I'm, I think I'm up. i got like one, two. I think I'm up eight in the next two innings. So if we get two guys on, I'll get another. I'll try and get another one anyway. All right. Sounds good. Great night so far. Glad you're having a great time. Thanks a lot, man. That's Brett Ronenberg. A couple of big hits in this ballgame. Back upstairs to you guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Steve. Fun-loving guy, Brett Ronenberg. Fun guy to be around as Solomon Manriquez fouls one off. A two-strike pitch. So the count remains even on the catcher of the Harrisburg Senators. He's been through a lot. He had that shoulder surgery, not only in his rotator cuff, but also his labrum, and a lot of rehab for Brett Ronenberg to get back to where he is. Amazing accomplishment, really, to come all the way back and be an all-star again for the second time in three years after missing an entire year because of surgery. Brett, a testament to the growing baseball program in Australia. Some of the pioneers of Australian baseball as there's a swing and a foul ball back. Think back to Dave Nilsson, who was an all-star catcher for the Milwaukee Brewers, really the first Australian-born player to break through and become a star player in the major leagues. And now there are several Australian-born players that play in the major leagues. Another foul ball by Manriquez, 3-2. And, and Ronenberg, at 27 years old, certainly running out of time. But, you know, you get the sense that he's a young 27. He's still got a lot of hits in the bat and a guy that can really swing the bat very well and very versatile as well, can play a lot of different positions. Swing and a miss of Manriquez down on strikes. And Glenn Perkins, 
talking about his 2 and 10 record coming in is struck out both Cody Kirkland and Solomon Manriquez to open up this inning two away and get another look at Gary Burnham the left fielder of the Reading Phillies who has batted twice he came into the game in the third inning to play left field and blew out the center field and then doubled he really got things going in that Southern Division sixth inning he flares one to left but right at Jorge Padilla and the left fielder of the Binghamton Mets puts it away a one two three bottom half of the seventh inning will go to the eighth of the South holding a one run lead. The 2006 Eastern League All-Star Game on FSN Pittsburgh is presented by UPMC Health Plan where you belong by Quaker Steak and Lou voted Best Wings USA and by the Allegheny Mountains Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome to the heart of the beautiful Alleghenies. Well, a huge crowd on hand tonight. 9,308 enjoying themselves as we get set for the top half of the eighth inning and we get a look at a real good looking pitcher in the Baltimore Orioles organization James Johnson it took him a while to get here to the double A level he was drafted in 2001 in the fifth round this is his first double A season but he's highly regarded rated as the number five prospect in the Baltimore Orioles organization he's a member of their 40 man roster a strike on Bronson Sardinia who's gone the distance a little roller to first Brett Ronenberg who joined us in the Dug out last half inning flips on to Johnson one away here in the eighth inning. Well, you know one of the great things about coming out to Blair County ballpark or any minor league ballpark you get to see some unique promotions. Take a look at this stag. That can't be fun on a night like this as humid as it is. That's the human Couldn't hamster get us in ball there, race. Could you? No, I wouldn't be in there. I'll tell you that right now. That's the human hamster ball race. Now the idea is you don't just keep running. You have to get to the bowling pins and knock them over. Now look at this guy. He came back from a couple of lengths back. Now watch this. Look at this guy motoring in the Pirates jersey. Photo finish. Look at this. You got to give him credit for getting back in the race at least. <laughs> There's a ball on Brian Busher of the Connecticut Defenders. He singled in his first plate appearance. That was back in the sixth inning. The Southern Division, a slim one run lead as we go to the eighth inning. The ball that misses low. Another good look at James Johnson, 6'5, 224 pounds. He's from upstate New York, Endicott, New York. Breaking ball upstairs. Sometimes it takes these northern guys a little bit longer because, of course, they aren't pitching as much coming from the northern climate. And Johnson was drafted out of high school. So the Orioles wanted to take their time with him and get him to the double A. And here he is in his sixth professional season making his double A debut this year. Like the Altoona curve are to the Pirates, the Bowie Bay Sox are to the Baltimore Orioles. They're right down the road. Their general manager can come and watch them play on the same day that he watches his own club. The way David Littlefield could do the same thing with the Pirates. It's a convenient place to have your double A team. You know, just a stone's throw from Baltimore. Full count pitch coming up here from Johnson to Busher. And he will drive that one, hit pretty well out into right center field, but out there and making the catch is Johnson's teammate in Bowie, Noah Hall, for the second out of the inning. So Johnson has retired the first two men. Great work done. Brian Rogers went an inning and a third. The Erie Seawolves right hander came in and got out of a bases loaded jam in the second inning after the Northern Division had scored three times. And then Kip Bachnight of Harrisburg, the best pitching performance we've seen tonight. Three scoreless innings with three strikeouts. Bear Bay worked a scoreless inning despite giving up a walk and a hit. And we see the Six pitcher of the night here for the Southern Division. James Johnson is Curtis Thigpen, the catcher of New Hampshire, drops in his first hit of the night. He's not one for four, keeping this eighth inning alive. Shortstop, Felix oh man, at first base, here's Felix Molina, the starting shortstop. Knocked in a run as part of that three run Northern Division second inning. The only three runs they've scored in this game, and that base hit by Thigpen, the sixth hit of the night. Molina not only knocked in a run back in the second he also scored a run takes a strike from Johnson nothing in one man at first base two outs here in the top half of the eighth inning Johnson comes set there's a swing and a miss maybe a foul tip into the glove of the catcher Manriquez and Johnson out ahead nothing in two last year James Johnson helped Frederick win the Carolina League Championship he was the pitcher of the year in that league 
And he was also named the Orioles minor league pitcher of the year. They really like this guy. There's a fastball up and in. That one registering 93 on the radar gun. Pretty good arm. And again, they've really taken their time with Johnson. So he's a guy that really is starting to peak in his professional career. And a guy that could be pitching in Baltimore as early as this September. And what a breaking ball that one was. Freezing Molina for the final out of the eighth inning. More great pitching by the Southern Division as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. 4-3, Southern Division on top. Well, you get a look right there at what is called the Rail King seats, right on the party deck down the left field line. And the Rail Kings were actually a minor league team that preceded the curve here in Altoona. They were an independent ball team, and the curve honoring the former Altoona Rail Kings, of course, which no longer exists by naming a seating section of the ballpark here. And great view of the ball game right above the left field bullpen. Not a bad seat in the house anywhere here at BCB, and a great night. The 2006 UPMC Health Plan Eastern League All-Star Game. A great success. And we just continue to roll the pitchers out. The seventh of the night used by Todd Kloss, the manager of the Northern Division. We get a look at right-hander Billy Sadler, a late addition to the uh, All-Star team out of the San Francisco Giants organization and the Connecticut Defenders. Billy Sadler, 24 years old out of uh, LSU. Another one. That's the third man tonight we've seen out of LSU. Or Shane Newman of Louisiana State started the ball game. Curve left hander. Skip Bertman, the uh, great college manager at LSU, has to be smiling. Not just at these guys, but his products at LSU are all over them. professional baseball, major league and minor league. Corey Kaler of the Bowie Bay Sox will stand in to lead things off. Kaler. Started the ball game and he's still in there one for three with an RBI single as part of that three run sixth inning. His single drew the Southern Division back within one and then Brett Ronenberg, the curve left fielder who's now at first base came through with his second and third RBIs of the night. And that gave the Southern Division a four to three lead which they carry here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Ball downstairs. So Sadler falls behind three and nothing. Look at the Southern Division and who they have left out of the bullpen. They've got two pretty good closers in this league. Marino Salas of Bowie and Brandon Knight of the Altoona Curve. Two guys that Tim Leeper could easily call upon to try and close things out when we go to the top half of the ninth inning. And as much as I think he'd love to bring in Brandon Knight as there's a walk here to Corey Kaler, I think that he would rather go to Salas. I don't think he wants to use Knight here tonight if he can avoid. Let's go down to Steve Degler right now. He's got a very special guest. All right, Stoggy, thank you very much. Bob Lozanak, an Altoona native and one of the original Curve owners. What's this night mean to you? Well, this is a culmination of everything I've ever dreamed of. Uh, first of all, to bring a team to Altoona is just wonderful. Uh, we tried to do this in 79, but it was uh, a little premature at the time. Didn't have a stadium or anything. And we always dreamed of one day having a ball. This is such a team here. And uh, Bob Jubilee and I spoke of that. We we're high school classmates. And we said someday we'll have a ball uh, field there in Altoona. How much faith did you have in the community that they would give you the support? I had 100% faith in the community in Altoona because I knew that it was a sports minded town. and. Uh, you know, when you uh, proportionally uh, compare Altoona to the other cities with population versus what the other cities are, I think you're going to have a very, a very hard time beating it. So it just boils down to great loyalty from the fans in Altoona. This is such a magnificent stadium. Was it a situation of let's build it right the first time? Absolutely. It was. A, we had many battles and arguments over a lot of things when we did this. And come, it quickly comes to mind is the fact that we have 42-inch risers here on the bottom where you can get up and go out very easily, uh, not disturb anybody else. I've sat in a, a ballpark to, at this ballpark one night for four hours in the game. I turned to my wife, Joan, and said, Joan, you know, I've been sitting here for four hours. <laughs> and I said, you know, and I'm not tired. Some ballparks, you know, you're crammed in. Uh, and I had seen a survey, ironically, when we were uh, designing the ballpark, and the, one of the questions asked was, what is the number one thing that the fan wants? And they said 52% responded, a comfortable seat. Well, you've done that here and then some. Congratulations, a magnificent night for you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Let's go upstairs to you guys. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. And what a great guy Bob Lozenak is. And we all owe everything. The reason we're here tonight is because of that guy.
Bob Lozenak, along with a few other individuals, one of which who he named, Bob Jubilier, state senator in this area of Pennsylvania. But Bob Lozenak, just a great family guy. He had owned the Albuquerque Dukes, the longtime AAA affiliate of the Los Angeles Dodgers, when he decided to uh, try and make this project happen. And it was against all odds, Steige, that the Altoona Curve, or the Altoona ownership group led by Bob Lozenak, got this franchise. It was really an upset. A lot of people around baseball laughed at the notion that a town the size of Altoona could have a double-A stadium or a double-A franchise. And look at a night like this and all the naysayers, certainly a lot very wrong. Is There's a swing and a miss and a strikeout as Carlos Leon is out. One away here in the eighth inning. And we'll see a new pitcher come into the ball game as Todd Kloss. Now he's going to try and make sure that he gets everybody in the ball game. He'll race out to the mound. And that'll be all for Billy Sadler after two batters. And we're going to step aside. We have a pitching change here in the bottom half of the eighth inning with the Southern Division holding this one-run lead. Well, we're in the bottom half of the eighth inning, a pitching change, and so we've got a new pitcher into the ball game. Right-hander Yvonne Maldonado becomes pitcher number eight used by the Northern Division squad. We'll look at Maldonado of the Binghamton Mets, New York Mets affiliate. Good numbers on the year. He pitched in the World Baseball Classic prior to the year for Puerto Rico. And he faces Melvin Dorda of the Harrisburg Senators. Dorda singled and scored in his only plate appearance back in the sixth inning. That three-run sixth inning has given the Southern Division the lead. They try and add an insurance run here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Runner goes, and there's a ball hit fair inside the bag down the left field line. On his way to third goes Kaler. He'll be held up there. And into second base is Dorda with a double. And that ball just ripped right inside the, right inside the bag down the left field line. Maldonado left it up in the zone, and he jumped all over that pitch and ripped it into the left field corner. By the way, Brandon Knight, the hitting coach for the Altoona Curve, getting a chance in this All-Star game to coach some third base. He and Tim Leeper are great friends, and, and Leap wanted to give BMO, as he's known around the Altoona Curve clubhouse, an opportunity to go out and coach some third base, the opportunity that he only really gets when Leeper gets thrown out of ball games. And gets a chance to do that here in the All-Star game. So they'll bring the infield in with Noah Hall at the plate. Chance to break this game open, a one-run lead, and there's a strike called as Maldonado add, adds a little flair to the end of that pitch. Called strike on the outside corner. Hall walked and was left at third back in the sixth inning. All the way around in that Northern Division infield, they're in. Runners at second and third in the 0-1, and Hall breaks his bat, flares it into left center field, coming on, diving, and he won't be able to make the catch. Will be the center fielder span, so that will score the runner from third. And then Hall will just waltz into second base. So it's a one-run single, making it a 5-3 ball game. You're going to hear the bat break as it flared out into left center field and Denard Spann, the center fielder of the New Britain Rockcats, showing some great speed, nearly able to get to that ball. Nice little insurance run for the Southern Division. And now Brett Ronenberg can write another chapter to what has been a pretty good story for him in the Altoona curve here tonight. Three RBIs, three of the five for the Southern Division squad. He has three hits tonight, all singles. Drove in a run in the first and two in the sixth. And two more men in scoring position as the infield remains in. Maldonado, the right-hander. There's a strike called. An RBI single back in the first inning that gave the Southern Division the lead, and then that go-ahead two-run single in the sixth inning. And Southern Division adding a run here in the eighth inning, leading it by two. Now Ronenberg will bounce one to first, knocked down by the first baseman, Von Schell, but a nice recovery by Maldonado, the pitcher, and then he flipped it on for the second baseman, Gabe Lopez of Trenton. So Ronenberg denied an RBI there. 3-1-4 will be the put out, and we're going to see the manager, Todd Klaus, come out of the dugout once again. That was a ridiculously good play by Gabe Lopez. That was unbelievable. First of all, that he had the wherewithal, I mean, the, the smarts to get over there, the awareness of what was happening. He quickly made a beeline to the bag. Look at him running in behind the play here and then watch what he does. He bare hands the ball to get Ronenberg. Just a great play by Lopez. Well, Maldonado will leave the ball game as 
We'll see the final pitcher available for the Northern Division. This will be Justin Pulp of the Trenton Thunder. He'll come into the ball game and this will be the ninth pitcher used tonight by the Southern Division. Well, 5-3 game as we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Let's take another look at this great play made defensively, Stagy. Gabe Lopez coming over to second to cover after Tyler Von Schell originally dropped the ball and got himself to the bag and then made a great grab with a bare hand to get the out at first base. Just spectacular by Gabe Lopez, second baseman of the Trenton Thunder. Well, Kevin Kuzminov will face the new pitcher. There he is, Justin Pulp, former first-round pick of the St. Louis Cardinals. He leads the league in saves this year. Won't have a chance to get a save here tonight as he gets Kevin Kuzminov to lift a shallow fly ball right center field. Second baseman Lopez will back up and put it away, and we will go to the ninth inning as it'll be a 5-3 to three lead for the Southern Division. We'll see if they can close out an all-star victory tonight here in Altoona. Well, we're three outs away from wrapping things up here. A five to three lead for the Southern Division. They were down three to one. Some big hits keyed by Brett Ronenberg. You certainly got to be a favorite uh, to be the MVP here today for the Southern Division squad. The hometown hero, three for four with three RBIs tonight. And we'll go to the ninth inning. And we'll see if Marino Salas of the Bowie Bay Sox can close it out. There's a look at Brett Ronenberg playing at first base. He's been in there the entire game. A great night at the plate for Brett. And we mentioned Salas into the ball game for Bowie to try and close it out. And to try and close it out up here in the booth. My good friend Paul Steigerwald. Thank you, J.D. And a great job as usual by you. Folks, back in Pittsburgh, um, just remember that name, Jason Dombach, who does a fantastic job with the Altoona Curve as their director of communications and also uh, their regular radio broadcaster. And he's uh, taught me a ton about baseball, and I still have probably uh, well incredibly far to go to learn anywhere close to what you know about this game JD and I really appreciate working with you Gabe Lopez who made that awesome play at first base leads it off here against Salas and the north down by two and you look at the history of this all star game this is only the fourth year of its existence even though the league has been in existence 83 years the north won the first all star game the south won the second. The North won last year, and now the South is trying to even the score here. Here's the 0-1, and Lopez fouls it back into the screen. And again, if Salas runs into trouble here, there's still Brandon Knight, outstanding closer for the Altoona Curve. He is still available and down in the uh, right field bullpen for the Southern Division. So Salas, who's been a very good closer this year for Bowie, a team that will hope to have a very good second half in the Southern Division and try and get back in the playoff race, one which Akron and Altoona at the All-Star break, have very comfortable leads in. Marino Salas with a record uh, this year with Bowie of 2-4, and four, a 2.87 earned run average. One ball and two strikes on Gabe Lopez, 26-year-old second baseman of the Trenton Thunder, the affiliate of the Yankees, and he has become a fixture there in Trenton. Here's the 1-2 pitch to him. Swung on and fouled back. Salas signed by Baltimore as an amateur free agent, a member of the Orioles 40 man roster for the first time in his career. And he's in his ninth season in the Orioles organization, pitching at the double A level for the first time in his career. Last year he ranked third in the Carolina League with 16 saves for Frederick, Maryland, which of course is also right down the road from Baltimore. That's their class A team. Lopez has a great eye and it's now two balls and two strikes. More walks than strikeouts in his career. Coming into the game second among second basemen in the Eastern League in fielding percentage at point nine eight two and we've seen a good example here tonight of why he ranks up there in fielding percentage. Here's the two two pitch and it's now three and two. And the last thing you want to do is walk the first batter in a situation like this. You're up by two and that can always be a recipe for disaster. So we'll see if Salas can find a way to get Gabe Lopez, who certainly is in a position he enjoys. Three balls and two strikes. And he hits a little flare, and it's going to be right to the glove of Melvin Dorda out there at second base. One away here in the ninth inning. 
Well, the Altoona Curve sister franchise, the State College Spikes are playing their inaugural season at beautiful new Medler Field at Lubrano Park in State College. Spikes are the short season Class A affiliate of the St. Louis Cardinals and the same great affordable fun family entertainment that you see here at Blair County Ballpark is on display in Center County. For ticket information, call 877-99-SPIKES or visit statecollegespikes.com. Just up the road about 40 miles or so in State College, beautiful new ballpark right in the shadows of Beaver Stadium. Denard Spann has gone the distance here tonight and he swings and lifts one in the right field. Corey Kaler, who's also been in there the entire game, makes the catch and the second out of the ninth inning. Well, Diggs, uh, I know you've been in this league a long time, 15 years as the voice of the Reading Phillies, and, and I'm sure you've been to a few All-Star games, and I, you have to just think this has been a great one here, huh? Yeah, it's been a fun experience for everybody. The fans are having a great time. Even the players, you watch them in the dugout out in the field, they're enjoying every minute of this as well. Two down here, and Jorge Padilla will try to get it done, but he bounces one out to second base. Melvin Dorda flips on to Brett Ronenberg, who has the ball on his glove, and that's a fitting way to end it because Ronenberg will probably be the MVP with three RBIs on the way to a 5-3 win for the Southern Division All-Stars. So the hometown team wins it. Tim Leeper, the manager, feeling pretty good, shaking hands down there. And Salas gets the job done here in the ninth inning to get the save. And the Southern Division wins it by a score of 5-3. to three. J.D., just an outstanding storybook night here for Brett Ronenberg and the Altoona Curve and the entire Eastern League. Absolutely no doubt about who the MVP of this game is. Brett Ronenberg and the Southern Division coming away with a win. Had a lot of fun, Stiggy. Thanks a lot. It was great. And now the celebration is on out there. And these players all enjoying their co each other's company so much here during this All-Star celebration. Again, the final 5-3. The Southern Division All-Stars win it for Jason Dombach, Paul Steigerwald. Good night, everybody.